Bonjour tout le monde, j'espère que vous allez bien. On se retrouve aujourd'hui pour Zach en roue libre, troisième épisode de cette session USA. Je suis très content de vous retrouver aujourd'hui. Ça fait super plaisir, c'est un beau petit dimanche. Nous sommes en direct de Dallas. On a quitté Los Angeles il y a quelques jours et donc nous sommes tout à fait prêts à avoir d'autres créateurs de contenu, d'accord Mardi, j'aurai le plaisir d'avoir Hector, ex. Mercredi, j'aurai également le plaisir d'avoir quelqu'un d'autre. Je vous en parlerai à la fin. Mais en attendant, je suis vraiment super refait d'être ici. Comme vous avez pu le remarquer, sur l'écran, dans le chat vous êtes super eh, dans le chat vous êtes grave chaud, ça me fait super plaisir vraiment vous faites kiffer, comme vous l'avez remarqué euh, à l'heure actuelle il y a euh, un partenaire qui nous a rejoint euh, pour cette aventure, c'est WeWard donc euh, ça me fait super plaisir WeWard c'est une application euh, d'accord que vous pouvez télécharger, elle est gratuite et plus vous marchez et plus dans le temps vous pouvez gagner un petit peu d'argent, d'accord, il y a un, un code de parrainage Zach WeWard ainsi qu'un lien qui traîne dans le chat, donc n'hésitez pas à aller checker, on remercie WeWard, remercie WeWard dans le chat, c'est aussi grâce à eux que ce genre d'initiative peut avoir lieu, donc big love à eux, on aime WeWard, téléchargez, allez voir, il y a plus de 10 millions d'utilisateurs dans le monde, donc c'est très très cool et c'est très important qu'ils puissent avoir des partenaires comme ça pour soutenir de telles initiatives. Pour le reste, eh ben, ça me fait super plaisir d'être ici, les gars, vraiment c'est euh, un plaisir, d'accord Los Angeles c'était cool, aujourd'hui nous allons être à Dallas, vous avez vu l'invité, ok, c'est un invité... Franchement, je pense que il a marqué l'enfance de beaucoup de personnes parce que cette enfance a représenté la compétition Call of Duty pour beaucoup, ok Une compétition qui a été superbe, une scène qu'on a tous kiffé, qu'on a tous adoré et dont je reçois l'un des <rire> protagonistes principaux parce que aujourd'hui on est avec Cream Six. Aujourd'hui, we are with Cream Six. How are you? Good. Uh, is, it, is there a translator that, you know, they're going to have to start from the beginning on, on no, that one? Of course there is a translator. No, no, but uh, you sound completely, the way you speak French, is is there accents? Because you sound way different from Paco. Really? Yeah. No, I don't have an accent I, because I am like from uh, middle France, you okay. know, and uh, we have like the, he, the he, average accent. He grew up in a village, apparently. Okay. Like straw huts. Okay, so when you like are a in a house. Okay, okay, I get it. When you are in a little village, you can have like a regional accent. Oh, okay. I don't know if you have you have this in the US. You're yeah, oh, we got a whole bunch of different accents. That's why I'm asking, you know, trying to get educated, you know, but uh the the way you're way more pronounced. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. you prefer my pronunciation or Paco's? Your yours is like uh more Paris style. Like like I'm used to that. Like uh, I don't know. I, I you know Paco's not French, he's Algerian, right guys? He's Algerian. Right, right. Oh, the, so, hey, I've done more for that country. You have done, I, I've raised more awareness for Algeria <laughs> than anybody in the US. <laughs> so, Do you like so, Algeria actually? Because like, uh, yeah, uh, I studied that on like Google Maps. You know, I keep playing GeoGuessr. Let's go. Yeah, GeoGuessr and you know, don't get Algeria. I keep wishing I got Algeria. So, you know, my, you know, I'm American. So I'm kind of an idiot. No, you're yes, not. Yes, yes, no, that's, but, but I'm not stupid. Okay. But I'm not stupid. Okay. So, you know, Algeria, learning about it, but France, love France, except for I got, you know, you got some questions for me. Yeah, of course. But we're starting this off hot. Let's go. Okay. Why do you find human feces, human shit mm -hmm. sometimes on the streets of Paris? Why do you find human shit in the street of Paris? Yes. Like, I know it's not a dog. It's not dog crap. <laughs> it's not dog crap. You know, I want to love, uh, you know, I want to love Paris so much, right? But then you see that and you think, how can I? Il m'a demandé pourquoi est-ce qu'on trouve de la merde humaine It's dans les rues de Paris. Trip. It's once per trip. <laughs> Because like uh, in some uh, like uh, in some places in Paris, mostly yeah. in the north of Paris, there is like the the 18 area we call it. Okay, yeah. we, say, we call it an arrondissement. And uh, in this uh, so area, like low income area. It's not really about low income. Like there are uh, even sometimes some crackhead and stuff. Oh, so. So they're just shameless. They are shameless. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, yeah, Sometimes because, they can poo in the street. Yeah, because in the U.S., like, they'll at least pick an alleyway, <laughs> a dumpster, you know, <laughs> somewhere discreet. But, yeah, of but, but in Paris, they'll be doing in the middle of the sidewalk, middle of the street, broad daylight. Okay, that's not true. Not broad daylight, but like... In Paris, if you want uh, the, an honest shameless. answer, they don't care. Yeah. yeah. They, they really don't care. They yeah. are shameless. Like, um, the, we have Alice with us. Yeah. Alice, Alice, tu es ici? 
Oui, bien sûr. Ok. Toujours. So we have Alice. She will be doing like the live translation. So okay. when you're gonna give an answer, she's gonna uh, translate it in French for the viewership. Okay. And um, Alice, comment on dit une colline, s'il te plaît Ah, tu veux dire la colline du crack, c'est ça Bien sûr que je veux dire ça. <laughs> Uh, like when you say hill. Okay. Uh, so, so basically, basically, we've got like districts with people doing drugs and they call it like the crack hill. The crack hill. <laughs> there were a place called the crack hill where See, there was crackhead all over the place. I, that's why I love France, you know, because like here in the US, we'll, we'll say, oh, that's a low income area, you know, being careful. But you guys just straight up call it the crack hill. <laughs> You know, you guys don't. You guys call it what it is, the crack hill. Watch, watch, watch out for that area. Crackheads, fucking meth, meth heads. You know, basalt zombies. You know, avoid the crack hill, guys. So avoid I, the I like crack that. hill. I like that. <laughs> I like the fact that you say, like, yes, in French, we speak facts. We yeah. don't go, we don't take, like, a, yeah. we say the thing has there. Yeah, yeah, I like that, though. How are you doing? Uh, did you have, like, a, a nice week? Yeah, I mean, well, here's the thing, man. I've been, I, I don't know if you've seen the sim racing rig. Well, actually, it start this week technically started off doing the TST Tournament, okay, or, or char charity tournament, the Call of Duty Black Ops 2 tournament, words. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you know, it's actually for a great cause, men's health. You know, experience the the mental strain sort of side of things. Uh, but yeah, with that being said, I ain't coming back. You know, second three years in a row. Okay, you know, you can't put a price on dignity. Okay. <laughs> You can't because I lose it every single year going to that, that tournament. I can't even I can't even win a throwback on the best on, on the best Call of Duty. Um literally arguably my best game. And uh It's for a good cause. It's fine it, if it you is come for second. a good cause. But you take away that good cause, I ain't coming back. <laughs> and there ain't no reason to come back to get second again. Uh but yeah, and then you know, I got the sim racing rig. I, I actually want to try to go pro in motorsport. So Okay. You know, I got a better setup than, you know, Williams F1 driver, uh, Latifi, go Tifi. Latifi has a pretty <laughs> bad setup. Yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, beat his, beat his time on spa yesterday. Unbelievable. You know, five seconds off the pace. Okay. Come on, son. But, uh, yeah, I raced and stuff. There was spa this week. So spa is my favorite. Ok, let's go. Tu, il nous yeah. a parlé un petit peu de sa semaine, je crois que Alice peut vous dire tout ça. Ouais, donc euh, un peu une semaine chargée, donc il a parlé du TST de Black Ops 2, c'est ça si je me trompe Exactement, c'était un tournoi throwback sur Black Ops 2. C'est ça, et il a dit, euh, c'est bon, ça va, euh, chaque fois je me fais pisser dessus, je termine deuxième, euh, c'est terminé, euh, j'en ai marre, euh, parce qu'en plus c'est censé être son meilleur jeu, et à chaque fois, bah, il termine deuxième, quoi. donc euh, il dit, c'est bon, ça va, j'ai assez donné pour ma santé mentale... Euh, faut pas pousser non plus quoi. Exactement. Et après du coup, il nous a raconté qu'il essayait de devenir pro euh, pour la sur la moto, c'est ça Ouais, c'est ça. C'est sur euh, e-racing, donc c'est un jeu euh, d'automobile et il a dit qu'il avait un meilleur setup que Nicolas Latifi. Donc euh, apparemment, c'était un, une petite semaine sympathique. Ouais, ça s'est pas mal amusé. Exactement. Ok, so you had like a, a nice week, but like more than your week, I wanna like talk about you. Yeah. So we are going to be speaking like, a, uh, we want to know more about you, you know? Mm -hmm. So we have a classic uh, in this show, uh, which uh, uh, like uh, permits us to know better than uh, about you. So okay. I'm going to ask you, who are you? Where do you come from? And what did you study when you were younger? Uh, so I've actually done, I've done these a lot. So my name is Ian Crimsix Porter. I'm from Seattle, Washington. I've, I went to school for business, uh, at the university of Washington and pretty much dropped out to pursue COD, Okay, you know, in black ops too. So it's, and that was 2013. Yes. 12, 12, 13 approximately. Yeah. Did, did it come? Oh yeah, it did. 2012. How old are you? I'm 29 now. 29. Yeah. So, so uh, like you were pro, like. I was technically uh, pro at 13. At 13? Yeah, in, in COD 4. Call of Duty 4, yeah. like the, the Xbox 360 days. Yeah, 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 way, way back. Yeah, when most people, you know, when they ask me, you know, how do I go pro, right? I'm like, you know, I, I eventually, you know, the first year or so, especially when I was on Optic, 
you know, I'd be like, oh, do this, do that, do this. And then I started realizing like, dude, what the fuck do I know about? I don't know about that. Yes. You know, like I was there, you know, tech, you know, in COD 4, there was what, a million teams on the game battles ladder. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, you know, there's a lot more people playing, but there weren't that many like hardcore people on it. It so, was still casual. Yeah. Yeah. It was still casual. The money was like sort of there, but not really. Um, but the biggest thing is like, dude, I was at the top since the beginning. Okay. You know, so I never really had to work my way up. I mean, I still had to work my way up like a social ladder, but there wasn't really like in terms of like who's good, who's bad, you know, but I haven't, uh, you know, I never had to go through that. So pretty much as I, I started saying like, Hey, like, don't ask me. I don't freaking know. Okay. You know, so you didn't grind your way up. You started at the top. Yeah. Well, the I, well I still grinded my way up. I mean, the way it was like, you know, game battles, uh, doubles ladder okay you the know 2v2 yeah and do you remember the thing called the crown yes yeah so we did uh we ended up getting the crown one day me and my school buddy and we held it for 75 consecutive matches and then that's how i got on a team and then that team went like it was actually probably one of the craziest records it was like 181 and 0 on back when everyone was playing and it was like And we had, we had like 12 people on the, on the team. The 181, you know, mm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's like, some kind of crazy record. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that was, and you know, that's a best of four search and destroy. Best of four. Well, or, or the first of four, I mean, Ah, okay. yeah, yeah. It wasn't, it wasn't first of six. So, and we were playing the bullshit maps too. Like, really? We're, yeah. We're like, we were playing bog. We were playing block. Okay. You remember block? I mean, I mean, we still played all the, you know, the main ones. Like, like you were, uh, but, but I mean, everything was in rotation. You were so, playing more than like the usual yeah. crash, crossfire. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. It was like, it was those maps plus all of the other like random ones. Like we were doing wet work S and D's too. Okay. Yeah. So it was like, you got to be good on every single map. And you know, right when we started getting like 80 and L, it was like, yo, ev yo, make sure if you are not at a hundred percent, we don't play. You know, you were doing this like aside from your studies, like when you were yeah, the, yeah, coming off of school. This was literally like freshman year high school. This okay. is when I started losing all my friends. <laughs> yeah, so. Because you were not seeing them yeah. that much anymore. Yeah, this is when I started, you know, dropping out of sports clubs and stuff like that. So, yeah, that it, it was it was sort of at the same time, too, when I saw Halo 2 on TBS. Uh, it's a news, news network channel. Yeah. But I saw halo pro tournaments going on. Saw people getting sponsored, you know, by crazy companies. The MLG stuff. Yeah. 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 Way back in the day. This was like ogre one. I was playing like this. Ogre one on uh, ogre two, I think. Yeah. 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 The, yeah. But when, when I say, you know, ogre two played forever, ogre one played, he didn't play for that long, you know? probably half the time Ogre 2 played. So, by the way, Ogre, Ogre 2 is sort of my uh, idol. Sort of my, you know, inspiration. Okay. Yeah. I so. get it. B before we go like into your Halo days and the, the development oh, uh, God, and everything, no. I'm going to ask uh, Alice oh, God, to make a quick no. translation. Uh, and just to tell you, there is Karma in the chat. Uh, he just uh, wrote a message. Karma's so, in the chat? Yeah. He said, block so fun. Here it is. Damon. Get your phone back from Bella, man. <laughs> I keep texting you and Bella replies, dude, hold on. Hold <laughs> He's on. going to text you and Alice is going to make the translation. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. It's, it's just an image. It's just an image. This is what, this is what Bella replied with. <laughs> I'm like, I said, I said, Damon, or I was like, you know, text to Damon. And I said, and Bella, if that's you on your phone, If, if that's you, give your phone back to your fat dad. <laughs> he said I was trolling you. <laughs> he was trolling me? He was playing with you. He just sent me images. <laughs> he just sent me an image of a spider on a giant fake spider on the fireplace. He's for right. For Halloween. He's right to do so. He's right to do so. Alice, on peut compter sur toi, c'est good. C'est vrai que c'était yes. très, c'était particulier. Fucking hate that guy. C'est parti. On va essayer de tout synthétiser. <laughs> Vas-y, let's go. Coup, tu vas arriver. Son prénom, c'est Ian Porter. Donc, il vient de Seattle, dans l'état de Washington. Euh, 
euh, il a 29 ans et il disait donc qu'il euh, a étudié le business à l'université de Washington, mais du ça. coup, euh, bah, il a vite arrêté parce qu'il y avait la carrière euh, sur... Euh, sur code qui était un peu plus importante et euh, du coup il disait qu'il avait commencé en fait euh, en 2012 2013 euh, à peu près et qu'en fait euh, bah à ce moment là la scène il n'y avait pas énormément de budget quoi c'était pas si étendu que c'est maintenant du coup bah il a pas trop eu à galérer pour se faire un nom parce que exactement bah, il était en plus pour te dire début, en fait, désolé, il, disait, coupé, il, il a était commencé sommet, en 2007 quoi. Quoi. ah ouais plus précisément voilà donc même lui il était plus trop sûr de quand il avait commencé euh, et après, du coup, donc il disait que même quand il était, euh, quand il était au, au lycée, euh, il avait fait pas mal de, de tournois avec, euh, avec des, des gens euh, de son entourage, que même il avait gagné 75 matchs consécutifs d'affilée, c'est ça qu'il disait il me ouais, ouais, Exactement, 75 et ils avaient une page Game Battle 181-0. Voilà, ouais. donc euh, il disait qu'il fallait être parfait en plus sur, sur euh, toutes les maps, quoi. Et que bon, bah, c'était un peu à ce moment-là qu'il avait commencé à perdre un peu tous ses potes au lycée parce qu'il bah, était tellement focus sur sa carrière qu'il n'avait plus trop le temps de les voir. Exactement. Il les calculait un peu plus trop. Et du coup, euh, juste avant, parce qu'on allait commencer à parler de sa carrière sur euh, Halo, il avait dit qu'il avait commencé à le voir à la télé. En fait, il s'est rendu compte qu'il y avait des tournois avec des gros sponsors. Et c'est comme ça qu'il a peut-être voulu se lancer. C'est ça. So Alice pretty much like made a quick resume of everything you said. You, you wanted mm -hmm. to say something? Uh, yeah. How how did you guys fit all this in the suitcase? Uh, we had. Uh, <laughs> how did you guys get through customs? What the fuck? We, we went to <laughs> your fucking job, guys. No. Yeah, I mean, they got, you guys can't see it. <laughs> But like, what don't you have here? <laughs> Il est choqué par la régie. We, we, you we guys had can't like see what's going on over here. Big blocks. Uh, this like, shit better than my place. Wait, uh, I'm gonna show you. We have like this massive box. We fit the computer inside. Yeah, but the monitor, the monitor stand. And the monitor was inside this. You guys gotta get some pelicans. <laughs> pelicans <laughs> are the. Yeah, no, that's that right there says. You know, musician. It looks musician, and uh, we went to, through the custom with, with it. Like they didn't yeah. ask that much question. Uh, Actually, that's probably smart because the, you know, if we went with what I was thinking, pelicans. That's tactical. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. it looks like you come to work, and if you come to work in the U.S., but you don't have a green card. Yeah. Do, do you know that uh, every, uh, almost every single time I come to the US, I have the second security check and stuff because of my face and my name? Really? Yes. When you print the, the boarding card uh, in the airport, sometimes you get it and you have four S on it. Oh, I'm, uh, yeah, no, I'm aware of the, that whole, I mean, Damon in the chat, he's had, we've had plenty of scares with the green card. Really? Yeah. You had some problems? I mean, one of the events, well, it was uh, one of the, you know, the ESWC where we played with the Naval mm -hmm. and then we went to London, Gfinity right after. Yeah. Damon was at the airport with us. Okay. I believe that was that event. I'm not sure, but like he got denied. Why? Like, you know, he, one time he got held up for like a day. He, he got held up a day yeah. at the airport because well, he had like, like some questions. Like coming, ba coming back in one, one, one tournament, he got held up for like a day. Yeah. Why? I don't know. They were suspicious. Maybe he was well, doing well, that was that, that was back before I think he was married. So, okay. it's different. Yeah. C'est assez marrant parce que du coup, je lui expliquais que moi, je me mangeais beaucoup de contrôles aux aéroports quand je venais aux états unis En fait, lui aussi, c'est déjà mangé. Enfin, Damon Karma, celui qui est dans le chat, un autre joueur Call of Duty, c'est déjà mangé au retour d'un tournoi. 24 heures d'arrêt par la douane. C'est assez marrant de voir que... It's funny because I, I didn't think like it could happen to anyone. I, yeah. I even thought at first that uh, they were doing like uh, this second security check like to French people or even sometimes French Arab people, you know, because yeah. of my name, my head, I have a big bird. Yeah. Maybe it scared them off. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, the, uh, I don't know. You know, it's funny, right? Is you're saying that, but I, the only time I've been randomly searched was in France. <laughs> really? At the, at the gate. At yeah. the gate? At the gate. I thought I was getting upgraded to first class. Nope. Nope. <laughs> I saw a bunch of security cards come out. You know, I said, you know, all in camo and everything. Like I was like, damn. Those are famouses. No, you know how it feels. I was feels. like, I was like, that's a couple. Of, you know, I know it was three or four guys. You know, all each with a famous. And I was like, you know, the security guards were 
you know, checking my stuff, but they failed to realize that, you know, because they had FAMASAs, I was sitting there with an erection the whole time. <laughs> I was sitting there like, that's a real, that's three FAMASAs right there, man. Wow. I love this weapon. Yeah. Uh, have fun translating that one. <laughs> Uh, I can make a quick translation. Il disait que la seule fois où il s'était fait contrôler, c'était en France. Les mecs sont arrivés avec des FAMAS. Et en fait, il se rendait pas compte parce que son petit contrôle avec des FAMAS, bah, ça lui a fait bander, en fait, littéralement. It gave him an erection. And she, she, you know, Alice is in there. Thinking they don't pay me enough for this shit. <laughs> right now. Oh, oh, she had to translate some dirty anecdote from Face Temper. Trust me, oh, he, yeah, you're, yeah. you're fine. Yeah, you're, we, we are just fine. <laughs> he's a Temper's a dirty dog. That guy. Ah, uh, he's a nice guy, but yeah. a dirty dog sometimes too. Yeah, that guy fucks for sure. <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> I want to, to like to uh, ask you because uh, we spoke about your studies and stuff. Maybe mm -hmm. the Halo. Uh, how did you start playing video games? And uh, more specifically, how did you start competing? Um, well, it was basically. I mean, I've always played video games. I started on Super Smash Bros. Oh, let's yeah. go! It was well. That was that was the first console I had. You know, it was back way back in the day. You know, when I was a little demon, a okay. little child demon. That's, you know, I call children demons. Of know? course, yeah. Oh, look at that demon over there. You know, and uh, I was like eight years old or so. We'd always go over to my friend's house to play video games because I didn't have, all, all I had was a Game Boy, Pokemon. Okay. You know, I'm nine years old, eight years old. I'm just like, dude, Pokemon sucks. Like, they got the real games over at, you know, Trevor and Drew's and Brogan's house, you know. And uh, anyways, the first, we got a GameCube, and then I got a PC game at the same time. You know what the PC game was? Tell me. Take a guess. I, wh what is the most extreme FPS you can think of? Uh, One that is, PC. I shouldn't have been able to buy when I was nine years old. GTA? No, no, no. Um, Hard, most hardcore. Quake, Counter-Strike, no, no. It's... Okay, that's, that, that's respectable, but it was... Uh, Counter-Strike. Okay. Yeah, and it was... Uh, do you remember Counter-Strike Condition Zero? Condition Zero? It was just a solo game? It wasn't a... Yeah, movie. it was like... Uh, a I mean, it was a little bit different. Apparently, I just found out that was like 1.5, 1.4. The classic. So, when people say 1.6, I'm like... Pfft. You know? Fucking Zoomer. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh... Yeah, no, I walked out of the store with that rated M game... At nine years old, you know, you felt adult. No, they just didn't pay attention, honestly. And I didn't know what I was picking either. I had no idea. I, okay. I thought the cover of this game looks cool. I, I, I've been wanting, you know, I've been playing first person shooters at my friend's house. Okay. And, you know, I wanted one. And, uh, yeah, that game was where I discovered, you know, hardcore competitive FPS. It was also where I discovered porn <laughs> remember back in the day they'd be sp spray painting like you know playboy magazine yes. stuff on the walls and stuff yeah and I, i i can just imagine what the other players were thinking because they're like dude why is that guy just fucking standing there staring at the wall for a while like he hasn't moved in like two rounds he <laughs> comes off spawn looks at the fucking wall and that you know that was me that was little nine-year-old uh ian porter just like <laughs> staring at the wall <laughs> just starting to fucking drool out my mouth and stuff man like that it, it was crazy but uh the, yeah first fps i ever played was counter-strike counter-strike it's funny because counter-strike is like uh, you started by the most competitive one yeah. basically oh yeah I and mean, i didn't even mean to literally the shit was destiny destiny <laughs> you were destined to have like a yeah, shit was, uh, you know it was it, it's crazy to think about now because you know where i'm at And just by choice, I thought the cover looked cool. I got clickbaited. I got clickbaited into, uh, you know, straight into the trenches, dude. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> hey, Alice, je crois que ce, ce qu'il vient de dire était assez marrant. Exactement, du coup il a raconté qu'il avait commencé bah, un peu classique avec la Nintendo 64, avec Super Smash Bros et tout, tu vois, quand il avait vraiment genre 7 ans et tout. Classique et, aux euh, états unis En même temps... 
il avait genre qu'une seule console avec Pokémon et il se disait putain mais Pokémon c'est vraiment trop nul en fait parce que en gros tous ses potes eux ils avaient des consoles avec des vrais jeux et il était en mode putain mais moi je veux pareil en fait euh, j'en ai trop marre de jouer à Pokémon c'est vraiment nul et du coup euh, il a eu en même temps que sa Gamecube euh, son premier euh, PC et en fait il est allé chercher son premier jeu il savait pas trop ce qu'il prenait et en fait il a pris euh, Counter Strike du coup euh, Condition Zéro ouais c'est ça Condition Zéro Condition Zéro c'était vraiment un jeu de merde en plus hein. Voilà, donc il avait 9 ans et personne ne personne lui a rien dit. Donc il a vraiment pris le truc, il est en mode ouais, bah, ça a l'air pas trop mal, euh, bah, je le prends et il est parti avec quoi. Yeah, I'm translating everything, don't worry. She listens and she translates and she like gets your story as you said it. Yeah, that's, well, that's, the, point. Just, that's just the point. It's just probably fucking hilarious because, you know, she's, you know. He bought Counter Strike, and this is where he discovered porn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oui, du coup, voilà, c'est exactement ça. Donc, euh, il racontait qu'en même temps, c'est au même moment qu'il a découvert le porno, quoi, parce qu'à cette époque, c'est là où t'avais les affiches pour les magazines genre Playboy et tout, et qu'à cet âge-là, bah, c'était juste arrêté devant l'affiche et genre il bavait devant. Euh. Donc, c'est c'est l'histoire de comment il a découvert les FPS. Deuxième et round le porno sur Counter Strike, ça allait contre le mur et ça regardait des affiches. Euh, je exactement. pense que la personne qui avait 9 ans a, a eu des étoiles dans les yeux. Uh, so after like uh, Counter Strike when you had mm -hmm. when you were nine, so you basically went on Call of Duty and after Call of Duty 4, you started Halo. Oh, I played a, I, yeah, I mean, I played a whole, like I played every single game. Okay. Yeah, it got to a point where you know. My parents were limiting how much I was going to play. Um, and back in the day, this is like an hour a day at most, you know. And my parents were light sleepers. Like we had like a gaming room. Okay. And it was right next to their room. So, so you can't play. Like so it was literally like they would wake up me just, you know, walking on carpet as quietly as possible. So, uh, yeah, it was. But I played everything. You know, I played one of my favorite ones was uh, Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 1. The two was my first uh, competitive game. Really? Yes. You missed one. One was way better. One, um, it was, well, the, the Go Advanced Warfighter 1 was a lot more like classic okay. Ghost Recon. Okay. Yeah. Two was just like an improvement, but it was sort of like they were losing the character. Like, like Advanced Warfighter 1, you... You know, each round's 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, honestly, like, you know, that game. And, you know, I, I don't know if you guys have it in France. FX has the movies. FX has the movies? Yeah. You never you never heard of that? No, I never heard of so that. So it's like, they'll play like a 90-minute movie, right? Okay. But they'll play so many fucking ads on it, commercials, that it ends up being three hours long. Okay. That, those, those, Ghost Recon... And that, that's where I learned patience. Okay. You know? <laughs> It's also called the classic NBA game, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that, that too. Um, and, uh, yeah, no, I played a whole bunch of games. You know, COD 4 came out. Honestly, it was like, COD 4 was so, I always say this, like, you know, people don't really rate COD 4 that high. Dude, we're, you know... When did that game came out? Like 2007? It was 2006? ahead of its time. Dude, we're following the same infrastructure from 2006, from a game from 2006, 2007. Like, we're 20, 2022, guys. 15 years It's later. It's still the same shit. It's just a little bit different. And like, when you, you know, when people make Call of Duty tier lists and stuff, it's like, dude, if you don't put COD 4, like, it's better than Black Ops 2. Really? Yeah, I mean, the gameplay in Black Ops 2 is better Don't get me wrong, but like COD 4, like straight up changed the game. Of course. Like everything, not even just Call of Duty, like every single game is like copying that game. It puts, that, like it, it puts the. It's where it started. The standard. Yeah. Whoever fucking came up with that shit, like, you know, they're hidden Elon Musk, aka they're from the future. They're from the fucking future, guys. Les amis, you can have your sip. It's fine, les amis. Il est en train de dire que Call of Duty 4 est sans doute peut-être le meilleur Call of Duty. En ce cas, l'un des meilleurs qu'il est sorti en 2007, qu'on joue toujours sur la structure de Call of Duty 4 à l'heure actuelle et que c'est une énorme dinguerie. Que dans vos tier list, tu vois, Call of Duty 4, vous devez toujours le mettre au top. Que Black Ops 2 est peut-être le meilleur, tu vois, ou en ce cas, un des meilleurs. Mais Call of Duty 4, c'est la base. It's uh, funny because, like, uh, most people in France, I would say, they started Call of Duty uh, by, yeah, with when? Modern Warfare 2. 
Modern Warfare 2? Yeah, Modern Warfare 2 is like yeah. m mostly one of the best selling Call of Duty game. Yeah. It's where it started in France, even uh, yeah. on YouTube and stuff. You know, we had big YouTubers yeah. and stuff. Uh, but uh, like, you, you don't That's know that, but Diablo X9, etc. Yeah. But on Call of Duty 4, it was still a bit uh, early, the early days, you know? Yeah, COD 4, yeah. The, I, I wish I could have played MW2 more. Um, because, you know, my, my parents were very strict. Okay. My and grades weren't good. And they, they took away the power cord and stuff, you know? Well, that's what they always did before. And, you know, I had three extra. What? I had three extra power cords. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sick. You can't play Xbox. I'm like, no, I'm actually sick. You know? Fucking psych. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but, but, but when my grades are bad, they, they did something different. They took away everything. Okay. They took away controllers, the Xbox, power cords. No, not only the power cords, yeah, you, you yeah. could not trade with them. I was sitting there like, a... you know, a couple months in to a fucking, I was in like uh, AP classes. So I was sitting there like, shit, I might not be playing for a while, you know? So I didn't play video games for like six months. Okay. But I played, I played at the start of the M MW2. I'm the creator of the ACR. Everyone was running MTARs. Uh, what was the other gun? ACR, MTAR, M16, FAMAS. Yeah, M16, FAMAS. Yeah, the burst guns. Um, the UMP, and, and classic? Yeah, yeah, no, but I was like the first one to run the ACR. Okay. And start winning tournaments, all that stuff. It's fun because the Americans, they were playing four ACR, and in Europe, everyone was playing FAMAS and UMP. Yeah. If you I, remember. I mean, you guys got to run the FAMAS. <laughs> you guys got to. I mean... The French guy. It's classic, you know that just style points right there. So, um, but yeah, no, MW two was great. Uh, yeah, but then I went to Halo. You know, let's skip that segment. You don't want to speak about Halo? No, no, we can talk about it. I, I would love to talk about my first ever teacher. Okay, who, who was your first uh, ever Dursky. teacher? Hmm? Dursky. Dursky. Dursky taught me everything I know. It's funny, I, I played, you know, basketball, baseball, football, soccer. Okay. Uh, fuck, Football. Dude. I played literally a lot. Well, yeah. Hand egg, whatever you guys want to fucking call it. Okay. <laughs> um, no, but actually, I actually played soccer too. And I made it all the way up to like uh, one of the best teams in our area. And how I knew it was one of the best teams was I showed up for the first day of practice. They're like, all right, warm up three miles. Okay. And then halfway through the run, you know, we're, we're talking. Um, I started to realize, I'm like, dude, half this team is fucking British. Really? And this is like, you know, the UK is here. You got to go through all the US. To and, go to Seattle. Yeah, to go to Seattle. And I'd never encountered a British person before. Okay. And then when I realized half my team was British, I was sitting there, what the fuck am I doing here? And what the fuck they, yeah. were they doing in Seattle? Yeah, yeah, because I, I was like a sub. Like, I got bumped up. Like, you know, basically they took the best player from, you know, our league, you know, and bumped me up to like a travel team. Okay. And once I realized like, dude, we're doing a three hour long practice that's starting with three miles, finishing with three miles too. So we're running like, you know, eight to nine miles. Which you know? is a lot. And there's a bunch of British people here. I was sitting there like, dude, I'm out of my depth, man. Like, where, why am I here? <laughs> you know, so, um, but pretty much, yeah. Anyways, back on topic, Dursky, he, I played all these sports. I didn't really learn how to be a teammate. Okay. Until I team with him. Okay. And that was where I learned like, you know, stats aren't everything, you know, Cause I, cause I went like one of the most positive, like I went positive 144 in Halo. It was my second event. Um, positive and, 144 kills is uh, yeah. <laughs> quite I don't know what my, back then in Halo, they didn't do KD. Okay. Yeah. They, they do, went positive and negative, which to, makes a lot more sense. I think what CSGO does that too. Um, but anyways, Thursky. Once, once I dropped him like an idiot, went to another t other teams, I was wondering, like, why the fuck can I not go? I can't go this positive okay. anymore. 
Like it's unreachable because you had to like play yeah. a beat, a well, bit. well, well, it was the fact that I wasn't even close either. I wasn't even close to that number, and you know, and and Dursky taught me so much about being a teammate. You know, helping like like before, it was just like I was playing with players. Okay, you know, but that guy taught me and basically, you know, the ins and outs of making the people around you better. Okay. Yeah. And that's what he did. That, that was his specialty. So, uh, you know, it's one big perk being a team player is one hell of a uh, big yeah. perk. You honestly, have to be a team player if you want to achieve anything. Yeah. Honestly, well, that's not true. No, that's not that's true. That's not fucking true. Okay. That's not true. You, you won a lot more than me. So I trust you. Well, well, I mean to win, right. You can still achieve stuff. By going the exact opposite, being like selfish and all that stuff. But um, I don't know the that aspect. It's sort of I, I would say it's a dying breed. Nowadays, it's like everyone's just playing for themselves, playing for a contract. You know, fuck fuck this team. I don't care what we place as long as I look good. Okay, and it's weird because it what happens is your is your team plays worse. You look better. Everyone blames everyone else but you. And then you so get you the next contract. So you stay. Everyone else goes. And, you know, last year was a fucking case of that. Okay. Okay. So, I get it. Yeah. Ah, là, 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 là. Je crois qu'il y a beaucoup à traduire, là, madame euh, Alice. Ouais, il y a beaucoup. Mais t'inquiète, j'ai tout noté. Let's go euh... Alors, je reprends du début. Donc, il disait que quand il était petit, ses parents étaient assez stricts. Donc, il avait le droit à une heure de jeux vidéo par jour, à peu près. Et qu'en gros, il avait une, une pièce réservée un peu pour le gaming et que c'était juste à côté de la chambre de, de ses parents. Et qu'en gros, il avait commencé avec euh, Advanced Warfare 1, c'est ça, si je me trompe pas Ghost Recon Advanced Warfare Fighter 1, exactement. Oh, exactement, tu l'as dit mieux que moi. Et du coup, qu'il disait que c'était hyper, hyper long, tout était super chiant et que c'est ça qui lui a appris vraiment la patience euh, euh, dans les jeux vidéo. Exactement. Euh, après, il y a eu tout un segment où il racontait, en fait, euh, donc, euh, comme tu l'avais répété un petit peu, euh, comme quoi lui, il préférait euh, Call of Duty euh, 4, parce que du coup, euh, même si le jeu était sorti en 2007, c'était un peu la base des bases euh, pour tout ce qui se fait, même encore euh, aujourd'hui. Exactement. Euh, donc après, bon, tu as, as assez bien résumé tout ce qu'il a, qu a raconté. Et euh, donc, il est revenu euh, sur, euh, ce que, sur ce qu'il vivait avec ses parents, en fait, et il, il racontait que, comme ils étaient archi stricts, <rire> dès qu'il avait euh, des mauvaises notes, euh, bah, il lui prenait tout. Donc euh, au départ, euh, il avait réussi à choper euh, trois câbles de rechange qu'il gardait. Et après, il faisait genre, il était malade pour pouvoir jouer tout, toute la journée. Mais qu'au final, euh, à la fin, quand il a eu des mauvaises notes, bah, ses parents lui ont pris littéralement tout le setup. Donc, ah, il n'y avait plus de comédie en mode, on t'enlève juste le câble ouais, d'alimentation. Et lui, il en avait trois derrière. Là, derrière, ils avaient tout enlevé. Et ça fait qu'il n'a pas joué pendant six mois. C'est ça, six mois sans jeu vidéo. Euh, et après, du coup, bah, quand il est revenu, donc il a parlé de Halo, du coup, avec euh, Dursky. C'est ça. Il disait que c'était un peu son maître, qui lui avait un peu tout appris et tout. Parce que lui, il avait fait, euh, il a fait pas mal de, de sport. Donc, euh, il disait genre du basket, du football, euh, du soccer. Exactement. Non, non, euh... soccer. Oui, non, soccer. Is football. Euh, football. Oui, c'est ça. Et football, c'est football bon. américain. Your football is American football. Football is soccer. Yeah, soccer yeah, is football. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, <laughs> voilà, rétablissons les choses. The, the soccer story was soccer. Of course. No, it's Fo football. football. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't really play too much hand egg. I, I, I'm just like uh, making fun of you because uh, in Europe, football is football. We don't yeah, say yeah. soccer. And we yeah. call your football American football because when you said soccer in the chats, they were like, no. And everyone's like, stop, 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 fucking freeze. Football. <laughs> Hands in the air, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> C'est important, les gars. You're locked up for that. <laughs> <laughs> Je te laisse finir, Alice, gentiment. Ouais, du coup, alors en fait, il racontait donc euh, vite fait pour l'anecdote euh, du football, du coup, euh, que en fait il avait euh, qu'il avait un entraînement et qu'en fait ça, la moitié de son équipe était euh, était anglaise et tout. Donc bref, pour pour euh, terminer sur cette parenthèse, qui disait ouais, l'Angleterre c'est quand même loin de, de des États-Unis. Euh, et du coup, en fait, il racontait que Dorsky lui avait vraiment tout appris sur euh, sur Halo parce que lui avant quand il jouait au jeu c'était uniquement euh, en mode bah, en gros jouer avec d'autres joueurs, mais je m'en fous de qui ils sont. Moi, ce qui compte c'est ma performance. Ouais, c'était pour et ses en fait, scores, etc. Il racontait qu'il y avait un event Halo où il avait fait un genre 144 plus de, euh, kills de plus que de morts c'était une dinguerie genre ouais voilà c'est ça et qu'en fait bah, quand il est parti euh, quand il a changé d'équipe bah, il s'est rendu compte qu'en fait il pouvait plus avoir euh, la même chose qu'il avait avec Dorsky parce que c'était un peu bah, leur truc à eux et que surtout en fait c'était lui qui lui avait appris comment être un bon teammate et comment bien jouer en équipe parce que en fait euh, il racontait que même maintenant la plupart du temps 
les joueurs étaient hyper égoïstes, ils faisaient ça pour les contrats, ils faisaient ça pour l'image de l'équipe et qu'ils faisaient ce qu'ils avaient à faire et qu'ils jouaient perso. Ils s'en foutaient un peu euh, du, de l'esprit d'équipe. Et donc euh, pour lui, c'était super important. C'est ça. Et en plus, je lui ai dit, c'est très important d'être un joueur un esprit enfin, un joueur d'équipe si tu as envie de réussir à faire quelque chose de fou. Et lui, il m'a dit qu'il n'était pas d'accord, qu'il y avait certains joueurs perso, ils arrivaient à s'en sortir. C'était assez drôle. Je translated everything, so we are just good. Um, on Halo, you want a couple things on Halo No. No? No. Because I know, I know Formal did, and I know that you were at yeah. least a good player on Halo, no? I was, I mean, best place was for like fourth. Okay. Yeah. It, so. It was tough. Yeah, it was, I mean, I got, what, first, first event, I went pro, it was like the first Halo event. I was actually going to get dropped uh, the Thursday before because they thought I wasn't real. Okay. They thought I wouldn't show up. Like you, you were dodging. You well, were going to dodge. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly, yeah. And, uh, you know, I went, I went to a Halo event with my mom. <laughs> and uh, it was funny. I was like 30 minutes away. I told him, I'm like, all right, I'll be in the, at the hotel room. Just give me a sec. My mom's making me a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh, the baby kid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, I finally showed up. And it was, I was teaming with a bunch of people from, like, New Jersey. Okay. So it was, uh, it was a little bit out of my... <laughs> It didn't really fit in. I mean, I fit in, but like, you know, it was different. There, there is a big difference between like the east side people and the west yeah, side yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like for French, we don't get it. Like we know yeah. there is the east side, no, the west side of the US. I mean, so like the the west coast where I, Pacific Northwest, it's like, you know, you got, it's beautiful there. Everyone's doing hiking trails, you know, mountain climbing, snowboarding. You know, shopping at you know, fucking REI, okay. camping in tents and stuff. And they're sitting there like, you know, Northeast, right? You know, they, it's a, it's a different sort of lingo too. It's really? like, yeah, they, I always say this about Philadelphia. No matter what, do not go to Philadelphia. We saw, and I showed them on stream, some uh, Philadelphia uh, crackhead videos. Or... Oh, dude, <sighs> Philadelphia is actually the worst place You know, it's it's honestly the worst of humanity. Really? Yeah. They find enjoyment in causing others misery there. Okay. You have the delusional Philadelphia Eagles fans. Um, or you know, they're gonna fight you if you say their quarterback's bad. Okay. Um Yeah, but anyways, the, the n'allez pas, euh, sorry, n'allez pas à Philadelphie. En gros, il vient de dire que c'était le pire de l'humanité là-bas. Il ne faut pas mettre un pied là-bas. Yeah, you. it's I, I don't know what kind of football fans what team has delusional fans uh, what team have delusional, uh, delusional yeah. uh, fans in france or just any just in europe mm, i would say uh, like uh, every attention uh, zach attention every single football team has delusional fans i would say I, i'm fan of olympic lyonnais lyon but i mean like even to say that your team's like oh and five right hmm To say your team's 0 and 5. Okay. Right. You, you, in Europe, you guys will at least be a little bit honest. Like, yeah, our team's trash. You know, we'll, you know, maybe next year. Yes. Right. Yes. But, but you still love them. Right. You know, like Eagles fans, they'll be like, yeah, we're 0 and 5, but we're better than your team. Like, we got unlucky. Like, the refs screwed us. Like, okay. all this crap. Somebody got injured. It's just excuse, excuse, excuse. I excuse. got the team you were looking yeah. for. Yeah. Barcelona. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Barcelona Probably. fans are delusional. I have no idea. I honestly have no fucking idea. <laughs> En gros, ils disaient les Eagles, qui est une équipe d'un sport américain, je sais plus lequel, je crois football américain, un truc comme ça. Eux, quand ils sont en 0-5, ils font que perdre de partout, que des excuses. Oh, on avait un blessé, ouais, machin, l'arbitre, ouais, si, moi, ça, machin. Quelle équipe correspondrait à une fanbase de pleureuse comme ça ben, Je lui ai dit, les Barcelonais. <rire> la 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 la. Et où c'est de chat <rire> They won't be happy. <rire> like, I don't know, man. It's just. Yeah, but. But, uh, anyways. I show up, they, they were all like so happy. Mm -hmm. They were like, like, what the fuck? He is real. He's actually here. Like, anyways, we got top 16. My Which? team is, my team is me. And th these are the names of my teammates. Uh, <laughs> one, one was called Bullets, okay. which was somewhat normal. Um, he actually, he does World Series of Poker now. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other two though. One's a, his name was Minority. 
Okay. And then the other one's name was Milk. So Milk, Minority, and Bullet. Yeah. And you. And our team name was, was uh, <laughs> dude, our fucking team name was, we, we were actual idiots. Like we were, you, you know the, you know the little like pull up thing you hang on the gym or the, the doors? Yes. I, I see. I'm already fucking it up. Um, our team name was Door Equals Gym. Because, because <laughs> back in the day, there's like the, the slogan of, uh, you got a door. You got a gym. Okay. So our team name was Tor equals gym. And we just kept going around saying D-E-G, D-E-G, you okay. know? So we literally named ourselves after that stupid fucking pull-up thing, dude. So, so like after this team, you, I think you went to the another one and stuff. Like, yeah. do you have a overall, if you can like, Overall about Halo, yeah. do, do you have a good memory from Halo, the Halo Reach, Halo 3 and stuff? Um, Or you were happy to go back to Call of Duty when you went back? I would say that Halo like shaped me into like the player. That made me, Halo honestly like, you know, I had the talent. I had all the skills like communication, you know, anticipation, prediction, like handling fucking nerves, all that shit. Okay. Right? Like I had everything, but what I didn't have was... Like I was selfish. Okay. So Halo taught me, you know, how to be not just a good teammate, but a great teammate. Okay. So being less selfish. Yeah. And that, it, it, yeah. It made me a complete fucking player. Okay. It, so, it, it made me to the point where I was like really good, like extremely good. You know, I was already extremely good at COD 4, MW2, Halo. Um, but now I could do that. And also make the teammates around me better as okay. well. So, so you when you came back uh, like uh, to Call of Duty, you mm -hmm. were like uh, I would say the best best version of yourself. Yeah, yeah, and I would say you know stuck to that for a while. Okay. So we are gonna speak right now about uh, Black Ops 2. Black Ops 2 is like massive mm -hmm. piece of your career. Just before I'm gonna let Alice do a little translation, and we're gonna and go. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna do you guys a favor. Hmm. You want to go to the toilet? No, 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 not the toilet. Tell me. So I don't know what it is, right? Yes. Do you, is it hot in here to you? I, is it hot? Yeah, is it hot? Is it hot? Yeah. You're hot a little bit? A little bit. Okay, you want uh, th us to put the... Why don't you guys turn it on? Okay, let's go. No, 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 I'm just curious because, you know, Paco did the same thing. Really? Yeah, he played in like 88 degrees. We're just gonna go I ahead. This. I got you this. Got this. Let the American do this. Let's go. Let the American. Il a chaud. Il va mettre la clim. Alice va traduire. C'est parti. C'est parti. <laughs> Timing parfait. <laughs> Désolé, Alice. <laughs> 88 uh, degrees Fahrenheit. What is that in Celsius? <laughs> We don't know. We don't even know. Yeah, how to uh, use this. Your, your Celsius doesn't even go that high. <laughs> Il est choqué parce qu'il fait chaud dans la maison. Il fait 31 actuellement, du coup. <rire> Vas-y, allez. 88, c'est 31. Euh, alors, ouais, du coup, il disait que sur euh, Halo... Ok, pardon, excusez-moi. Euh, du coup, donc, il disait que euh, pour Halo, il n'avait jamais atteint plus haut que la quatrième place. Donc, c'était... C'était pas mal, mais c'était pas non plus son meilleur jeu, quoi. Et qu'en fait, euh, le tout premier euh, event qu'il a fait sur, euh, sur Elo, en fait, il devait se faire tèche de l'équipe de parce qu'en fait, il, les autres pensaient qu'il était pas réel, quoi. Et, euh, et du coup, euh, juste avant la première compète, il était en mode Attendez, ma mère me fait un sandwich, euh, j'arrive et tout. Et du coup, genre, les autres, ils étaient trop contents quand il est arrivé. Il était en mode Putain, il existe vraiment, let's go. Et euh, en fait, il avait mis en, en team avec euh, des, des personnes du New Jersey. Donc là, il a expliqué vite fait la différence entre euh, le, la West Coast et la East Coast. Comme quoi, West, c'était sympathique et tout. Puis East, après, bah, vous l'avez entendu sur la Philadelphie, il a raconté pas mal de choses. Ouais, c'est ça. Il faisait et... les mecs à l'Ouest, tu vois, ils faisaient... Euh, ils dormaient dans des tentes, ils faisaient des randonnées, ils escaladaient des montagnes, ils kiffaient, quoi. C'est ça. Et que, du coup, à l'Est, c'était un peu différent. Et puis même aussi, euh, même culturellement parlant, l'accent était, était un peu différent, quoi. Donc après, en fait, au final, avec cette équipe qui s'appelait... Euh, Door equal gym, du coup, donc euh, acronyme DEG, donc ça fait un peu deg, quoi. Euh, C'est un peu le, <rire> un peu le truc de l'équipe. Ils ont fait top 16. Exactement. Euh, et du coup, ils disaient que c'était un peu rigolo parce que bah, les autres teammates, il bah, y en avait un qui s'appelait euh, Minorité et l'autre qui s'appelait Milk, donc euh, Lait. Et l'autre, bah, c'était Bullet, mais encore ça, ça passe, euh, ça passe comme nom. Et que maintenant, ils faisaient du poker. 
mais sinon, ouais, pour revenir un peu sur sa période de, de Halo, il disait que c'était ce qu'il avait fait grandir en, en tant que, que joueur. Enfin, c'est ce qu'il a fait devenir ce qu'il ce qu est aujourd'hui, surtout pour sa période Call of Duty. Ouais, ça devient un joueur un plus complet. Peu... Ouais, voilà, c'est ça. Avant, il était un peu euh, égoïste, un peu perso et tout. Et en fait, ça l'a fait vraiment devenir un, un bon teammate, quoi. Et pas seulement un bon teammate, c'est aussi le, celui qui faisait devenir les autres des bons teammates également. Donc, c'était vraiment un, un super atout euh, en équipe, quoi. Uh, I'm gonna ask you a quick question before we go okay. on to uh, Black Ops 2. Do you, uh, do you remember Gotaga? Yeah, yeah. I think like uh, Gotaga was our main player in France. And I really think, yeah. and most people here think that we had sometimes great teams. But they never showed up in Black Ops 2, like at international events, they always had some problems, you know? Yeah, well, it was, uh, I mean, man, he was doing content at the, it's a double-edged sword. Do you know what that means? Like, yeah, yeah, we yeah, get yeah. it. Okay, yes, because it's like, you know, and I learned that lesson in, in Optic, where it's like, if you try to do, you know, two things at once, you're going to do them both pretty average. Okay, you know, so, you know, so so you think like doing both of them but, but, hurt but, him? But he will, he wasn't doing content average. Don't get me wrong. Like I mean, dude, look at him now. I mean, he's a superstar. I dick bread that guy for subs. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, what? How, how many viewers he gets now? Fifteen thousand, twenty thousand, maybe yeah. sometimes fifty thousand. Sheesh, bro. <laughs> Sheesh, bro. <laughs> Fuck, dude. <laughs> I'll be sitting there like, you know, damn, 15K? Yes, playing on average. Playing what, though? Uh, playing everything. Like, uh, it's, he it can depends. play everything at 15,000? No, sometimes he gets a little less if you go on Apex Legends, for example, or things okay. like this. Okay, you, uh, you know what? If you, were, if you were to play iRacing, though, probably like 200. No, he would have more. Gotaga could be like taking a P and have 10,000. Like, uh, It's not about the game, it's uh, about God the, the damn, persona. Bro. It's not about. I, I, I'm not cheating. He had thousands of viewers playing, you know what? Red Shadow Legend. Do you know Red Shadow Legend, the mobile game? It's a mobile game, a shit mobile game. And he had like a thousand viewers I gotta, on it. I gotta study him. I gotta, I gotta figure out what he's doing that I'm not doing. <laughs> en gros, parlait de Gotha et je lui dis, tu te rappelles de lui Il a dit Gotha, il faisait de la compétition plus du contenu. Donc le fait de faire un peu les deux, ça te, ça te, en gros, c'est une épée à double tranchant parce qu'en faisant les deux, tu seras moitié moitié dans les deux, donc pas hyper bon au global. Après, il disait, attends, Gotha, ça reste quand même un monstre. Et il est impressionnant, impressionné de savoir que Gotha fait 15, 20, 10 000, des fois 30 000, 40 000 viewers. Like now, he has a, 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 like some big. Uh, studios in Paris, you know, where you can like just have a whole show going on. It's called uh, on Monday night. On Monday night, you have big shows where you have some big French personality and stuff. Look, I'm just going to show you how it looks. But uh, now uh, he, he well, I like remember playing. Things. Yeah, I remember playing him and uh, what's the other guy? Was it? I don't I don't want to mess this up. Who is his teammate? Is it Brody? Broken. Bro it broke, was broken. broken. Yeah, and yeah. then it was uh, Agony. Isn't, isn't that broken guy doing, like, what isn't he doing, too? Content now. Uh, I mean, he's, he, I mean. Look, it looks like this now uh, when Gotaga. God damn. And it's his stu studio, for example. Là, je lui montre une soirée open world, par exemple. I'm going to be honest. If I, if I went to an investor or something like that, pitch this, they'd be like, all right, we'll get you a couch. We'll get you that couch. Just the couch. Yeah, I, I couldn't get that. I definitely couldn't get that right now. But no, uh, no, Gotaga is doing like a big, big things. It's all about content and stuff. Uh, he has like big studios near Paris. Hey, what is, what's going on there? They were doing like... Um, like a, wigs? It, the, it, wigs because it was Twitch judge when uh, you unban or uh, oh. confirm the ban of your chat. Yeah, that's that, that old thing. Il est, il est choqué de voir tout ce que Gotha fait. Je lui ai montré plein d'images, par exemple, là, des, des soirées de tribunal, de Twitch, etc. Machin. Il a dit si moi j'allais voir un investisseur et que je, leur, je disais moi je veux faire ça, il me donnerait juste de quoi faire le canapé. Donc, ouais, ils sont, ils sont, ils sont choqués. Like, uh, Gotha is playing with Agony, Azox, Riskin, Riskin, maybe. Yeah, Riskin. Yeah, and yeah. stuff. And uh, do you remember playing the French team? They were easy for you, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, no, playing them is good. Uh, you know, seeing them drunk at the bars after <laughs> was even better. Um, you know, <laughs> so they were, they were always a, a good time. But uh, yeah, no, it, it, the the French team, I mean, you can't really blame them. They never really had a chance. 
Because, I mean, we play against the best teams all the time, you know. And we'd be like, dude, like, let's scream vitality. Like, we never said that. Okay. We never fucking said that. Um, just because of the ping difference and all that stuff. Uh, and even if we played them, right, the ping difference was so severe that, you know. No point. Yeah, they, no one, like, they could demolish us. You know, honestly, like anything less than a 250 to 100, like you lost it on land, you would lose that, you know, say if they, if, if their team was host. So, uh, yeah, back then we didn't play any Euro European teams at okay. all. So it's like they never set a chance. Okay, because like so. the US team were playing uh, between themselves. So they had like the best competition and stuff yeah. while the European team had to play themselves too so when like the, yeah they were coming here to the us the yeah. difference was big yeah oh huge that's why all the you know all the uk teams all the uk players moved over so it's just and and what do you know like they got better of course they, they got, got better, better so. we, rem we remember epsilon i'm gonna speak about like the first month of uh, black ops 2 like uh when you came back and, and stuff like uh In uh, 20, uh, 2012, MLG dropped Halo for Black Ops 2. Uh, th that's what made you come back on the game with complexity. Can you tell, mo uh, tell us more about like this comeback and uh, how you had to adapt to play high-level Call of Duty when you came back from Halo? Um, honestly, man, it was just like, it felt natural. Okay. It, yeah, coming back from Halo to Call of Duty, it felt like, you know, everything was just second nature. Okay. Like in Halo, like, you know, things sort of still felt weird. Um, but it was sort of like the tactical gameplay or like the, you know, just the way you aim down sight, the way you would like, I mean, I guess jumping isn't really the same, but it was like, I don't know, like, you know, in Halo, when you jump, it's like a little bit floaty. Yes. Yeah. So you go it's, a little bit, it's yeah. a big jump. Yeah. It was like, I could never get used to that. Um, But yeah, when I came back to Call of Duty, it was like everything felt like where it let where I left it off at. That, so, okay. Yeah. You didn't play like, for example, Black Ops One or Black, Modern Warfare no, maybe. No, I didn't play Black Ops One, MW3. Um, was there a game? No. That was it. Yeah. Modern Warfare yeah. Two, Black Ops One, Modern Warfare Three, Black Ops Two. Yeah, yeah. So I just missed those two. Yeah. C'est ouf, il n'a pas joué à Black Ops 1 et MW3. Et puis, quand vous êtes revenu avec la complexité, c'était comme avec Aix, TP et Too Quick, au début Fears. Fears, oui, au début du jeu. Oui, et il était vraiment bien. Il y a une histoire funny sur uh, Fears. Is me et Fears ont vraiment aimé l'autre. Vraiment Oui, une chose, c'est que j'étais tellement so sérieux à l'époque que quand like, when you're serious et que les gens laughent à vous, You know, it, it pisses it, you oh, off. It fucking pissed me off beyond belief. And Fears was like super laid back, super like chill. Like he didn't take anything serious. We were exact opposites. And uh, Pat made us room together. It was funny. By the end of the tournament weekend, we were like best buds. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so he, he cooled the things off. Yeah. We were sitting there making jokes like, yo, Pat just pushed Nade shot. What the fuck was that? You know, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, dude, <laughs> why'd he do that? You know, shit like that. So, um, but yeah, no, it just, it felt natural. Okay. Honestly. Je lui ai demandé c'était quoi la différence pour lui. Je me permets, Alice, hein, sur ce coup, là, je peux faire euh, tranquille. Hein. Mais en gros, il disait que le fait de retourner sur Call of Duty depuis Halo, même s'il avait fait beaucoup de Halo, ça paraissait naturel pour lui. Et qu'il était revenu avec Complexity chez Fears et que Fears et lui se détestaient. Parce que Fears, genre, il lui parlait sérieux et Fears rigolait. Parce que c'était un mec chill, tu vois, posé et tout. Et Aix, à l'époque, il leur avait fait un petit peu, tu vois, réconcilier. On les mettait dans la même chambre d'hôtel et tout. Et à, à la fin de l'event, ça allait un petit peu mieux. Euh, ça avait un peu calmé la chose. T Team Impact dominated the first month of Black Ops 2. Uh, we can note that you finished like fourth place at the Call of Duty Championship with Too Quick. Then you took Clayster. Can you tell us uh, tell us more about this uh, rivalry? Um, well, what do you mean? What rivalry between with us and Team Impact? And, and who? Team Impact. Oh, Farico. Sorry. Um, I would say that we weren't even considered. Everyone knew that we we're really good. Like they're like that core three is the best in the game. Okay. Um, but it's just their fourth. It's like what if they can figure out their fourth, like they're gonna be the best. 
So everyone sort of knew that, but it was, I, I don't know. It was right when we got clay, um, you know, everything sort of changed. Okay. It was like, everything became easier. Everyone looked better. Um, it was like, I, I, I said this in my podcast that I was doing, um, is that that team was incredible because we all had the same goal. Our, every single one of us had the exact same goal, which was to be so good and win so much money that we can drop out of school. <laughs> you know, that we can do this full time. That, that all of our goals was that. And, you know, our fourth never had that goal between fears and too quick. And then right when we got clay, you had the same goal. Everyone had the same goal. Okay. So it didn't matter the amount of shit we, that we had to go through to get it like little disturbance, like stuff I'd complain about now. Right. We would just go straight through it. Whether it was a middle seat on a plane flight to France, yeah. you know, whether it was like one G Finity, they threw us in a, like a hostel, like, uh, you know, bunk beds, you know, I think it was an hour and it was 90 minutes away from the G Finity one venue. Okay. We had to take like three different subways to get there. Okay. Fucking sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it was like, we just went through all these, you know, road bumps, you know, like it was nothing. And it was like, nothing would stop us from doing, from, from winning. How you describe it? It looks like you had uh, some kind of killer mindset. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it was, we, I mean, that's what we all thought. Luckily I joined the complexity, right? That team already, uh, Aix and TB both had that. That's how they like to think. A lot of people don't, especially now you never fucking see that at all. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to be friends. And it's like, for me back in the day, it was like, no, fuck everybody. Let's, let's annihilate them. Okay. You know, like, <laughs> like everybody sucks. Like we're better than everybody. Let's not let anyone take this from us. Like at the venues and stuff, you were not oh, particularly yeah. friendly with people. And well, stuff. You well were no, like no, it was, I mean, at the venues, it was mental warfare. It was like, try to, I mean, I would do things. I mean, even all the way, you know, until the day I retired, But I would be like, I want to seem as psychotic as possible <laughs> because, because here's the thing about crazy people, right? They're unpredictable. You don't know. And when someone's unpredictable, that's, that's scary. Of course. Yeah. So it's like, I want to seem like I'm fucking batshit insane to all these people. So at events, that's what we'd be doing. Okay. You know, back in the complexity days, like. You know, we'd, you know, borderline target one person on a team and be like, yo, that guy's mentally weak. Like, okay. first thing we walk in the venue, say, you know, hey, you shooting straight this time? They're like, right, like, literally, this is like fucking Thursday of a tournament, you know? Like, we would do anything and everything to, like, guarantee the win. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we, it was like, you know, I came from Halo Aix and TB were from COD. I've known, I knew Clay since, Clay was actually, it's funny that he's, you know, he's lasted longer than me mm -hmm. because me and Clay, that 181 and 0 team, me and Clay were on it. Okay, so yeah. he started on that game yeah, battle me, team yeah, 15 me, years ago. Me and Clay knew each other from like all the way back in 2007, 2008. That's crazy. So. Il y a Alice qui va vous faire la traduction, les amis, parce que je vois certains, par exemple, dans le chat, ils sont là, ah, c'est de l'anglais, machin, nana. Vous inquiétez pas, Alice assure. Yes, j'ai tout. Alors, euh, du coup, donc, euh, il parlait un peu de son retour euh, sur euh, Call of Duty 4 et donc euh, avec la team Complex ici. Et euh, en fait, même s'ils ont terminé quatrième, euh, bah, en fait, tout le monde savait qu'ils étaient, qu étaient bons et qu'ils étaient forts. Et quand ils ont pris euh, Clay, donc Clayster, ouais, Clayster euh, tout exactement. est devenu... Euh, beaucoup plus facile et l'équipe fonctionnait beaucoup beaucoup mieux parce que comme il l'a dit ils avaient tous euh, un même but c'était de tout rafler et gagner tellement d'argent qu'ils pouvaient tous arrêter l'école exactement vraiment Donc, ils avaient une mentalité les amis abattre l'ennemi in France the voilà, killer mentality we spoke ça. about is called abattre l'ennemi there yeah. is a meme about this I mean that's I mean we said the same thing like who's your biggest competition ourselves like I know we said that like so many fucking times but that was always the case. You know, it was like, 
in our minds is like we tricked ourselves into believing or into believing like if you want to win this tournament, like no one is going to stop you if you decide that no one is going to stop you. Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's, it's passional. It's, yeah. It's like, I, I don't know. We were next level because we also had a, you know, a coach that was a rainbow six, you know, national champion. Like he was, you know, the best at his game. You know, he came over. And me Stikes. Yeah. Uh, you know, me and Clay, uh, all, all of us were grinders, but we brought so much knowledge from all these other games too. And, uh, On it, yeah, it's, it, it was just like once we got before we even got clay, we knew it was like a matter of time. Okay, we knew it was a matter of time until you know we do something different. Là, il disait que la plus grande compétition qu'ils avaient, c'est ce qu'ils disaient dans leur tête, c'était eux-mêmes et que personne les stopperait. Vas-y, tu peux continuer, Ali, Alice. Euh, ouais, et du coup, euh, donc euh, ils s'en foutaient de, de ce que ça prendrait pour atteindre ce but-là, et du coup, ils fonçaient, ils fonçaient, et ils racontaient même qu'à un Jeffinity, euh, on leur avait mis euh, un, oh, c'était même pas, c'était un motel avec des lits superposés qui étaient genre à trois trains différents. À une heure trente de truc, et ils disaient nous on s'en battait les couilles. Ouais, c'est ça. Ils s'en foutaient complètement. Alors que maintenant, ils disaient, euh, moi, aujourd'hui, si tu me demandes de faire euh, un euh, États-Unis-Paris euh, avec euh, assis au milieu dans un avion, bah, je le fais pas parce que ça me saoulerait de, de fou. Et ils disaient, c'était drôle parce qu'à cette époque-là, ils en avaient vraiment, mais rien à faire. Euh, tous les obstacles, ils les prenaient et ils y allaient et ils fonçaient. C'était vraiment tête baissée. Et ils disaient que maintenant, c'était, enfin, surtout l'équipe, comme ils avaient tous le même, le même but, en fait, ils voulaient pas être copains copains avec les autres personnes des autres équipes. Genre eux, ils étaient là pour gagner et puis c'était tout quoi. C'est ça. Donc euh, il, il a même raconté que euh, que en event, euh, ils, ils essayaient d'avoir l'air un peu genre euh, un peu fou parce que comme ça, personne savait ce qu'ils allaient réellement faire. Parce que, et puis en plus, euh, il disait très justement que quand t'as l'air fou, bah, les gens ils ont un peu peur de toi parce qu'ils savent ils savent pas c'est quoi ton next move quoi. Donc euh, tu peux tu peux d'un coup faire un truc de, de dingue. Et du coup, ils avaient tellement cette mentalité que même quand ils voyaient un mec qui avait l'air un peu faible mentalement ils allaient le voir et ils étaient en mode euh, t'es sûr que tu vas réussir à tirer droit cette fois-ci euh, ouais, c'est ça en gros ils mettaient la pression oui. au mec comme ça oui. c'était oui. assez marrant il, en gros il arrivait à l'event et dès qu'il y en avait un qui pensait il était un petit peu faible dans sa tête alors tu vas tirer droit alors tu vas t'en sortir grosse merde et ça leur mettait la pression et c'est de cette manière aussi que Complexity dude, a réussi à dominer dude, you look like French Tim the Tatman uh, French Tim the Tatman yeah. oh <laughs> do, do, do you like it do you think it fits well with me <rire> ça, ça me fait un flow ou quoi les gars You just need some tattoos <rire> Some tattoos and now you're the French Tim, Tim the Tim man It's like I, I take it good I yeah. like the fact you said that Oh dude Tim's got the I, I, Dude I've been so jealous of that guy Really? Yeah <laughs> Why? Dude he's got the best gig And no one realizes it Bro when Think about this All he's got to do is start streaming You know He don't even got to play good People like He's like the I don't know. And, and I'm talking like he gets more viewers than <laughs> Gotaga. It's Tim. Sorry, it's Tim. It's Tim. Can, can, can you try them? So you can, uh, yeah, you can see how you look with yeah, them? Yeah, I don't know, man. I don't know. Ask the chat. Oh, yes. Le chat. Ça lui va comment? Chat. T tell me. Tell would us. You, chat, would you fuck me? <laughs> Question direct, Wait, les gars. No, but the coolest thing about these, though. Show, show I'm me. In, I'm in the clear frame. Obviously, that's pretty cool. I like the gold Master Chief. Sort of vibes. You can't see it. I mean, the cameras won't be able to see that. Oh! Il y a son blaze écrit sur la paire en bas, en bas à gauche. Unless you guys can, like, super zoom. <laughs> they can't super zoom. They can't. I, I can, like, basically. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to show them close. Alex, je vais sur la cam générale. Hop. Regardez. Est-ce qu'on le voit? Ouais. Voilà. Put it closer. Angle it upwards. <laughs> no, like angle, like change the angle. <laughs> It says cream six on. Uh, it says cream six on, on, on your car as well. Uh, no, it's just got my name. It's your name on the car. Yeah. Because yeah. Uh, we didn't say it to them, I just tweeted about it. But uh, you came with a Porsche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soft 130 on the way here. <laughs> hey, les gars, il était en retard. Il m'a dit, je vais prendre la Porsche. 130 miles an hour. <laughs> Soft. Soft, though, not hard. Soft. Yeah, soft. Like this, yeah. with one hand. Casual. <laughs> yeah. yeah. One hand on the highway, a little yeah. bit late. I mean, here in Texas, the speed limit ain't the speed limit. I don't know if you guys, I mean, have you noticed that? What? If you try to go to the speed limit, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting 
pass by. You're driving like Latifi. Of course. Yeah, yeah. But when you go just up to the speed limit, there are always people who go faster yeah, than yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Everyone goes like 90 miles an hour here. So. C'était assez marrant. C'était yeah, 200, assez marrant. what, 210? You, you, you saw 210 that uh, they, they, enjoyed, uh, they enjoyed your glasses on you? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Look. What? what? Dope. Yeah, oh, when I put those on, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I'm the new Cyclops from X-Men. Okay. You know, watch out, I'll fucking... Laser. Laser beam you. you know? <laughs> ça, il rappelle le mec des X-Men avec le, yeah. le laser comme ça. We, we talk about like the mentality and stuff you had uh, with uh, complexity. It kind of worked out. Like you won the MLG Anaheim, the famous one, the Gfinity, the UMG, and even the ESWC in France. Uh, how was it to play in, in front of the French crowd? You remember how massive it oh, was? Dude. It was at the Paris Games Week. Dude. That, that I, I, I still think... I don't know. I bet you a COD Champs has had more people, but that event, the way it was set up was like it, that event felt like there was more people that event. There wasn't fucking, you know, a single seat open. Now the crazy part was there wasn't even a, like a spot to stand or sit. Like it people, was full. Pe people were fucking looking over, you know, in between heads to, to watch. Um, That event to win, like that was sort of where all of our confidence like pushed was pushed over the edge. Okay. Like it was like now we're not just, you know, players. Like it, it literally like winning in front of that many people and like I mean what we, we we'd always just call it like executing, like, you know, we prepare, you know. Everything's good. We prepare to win. Once we know, you know, you get the feeling that you can win a tournament before you go. Okay. Yeah. And then, so all we say is like, we achieve that feeling, right? And then once we go to the tournament, all we got to do is execute. All we got to do is do what we know. Hey, yeah. Go, like go so, according to the plan. Yeah. So when we, you know, executed like how good we were, right? In front of that many people. We're like, yo, we are gods. Like, <laughs> but it, it was like, it wasn't like a cocky confident though. Because there's, believe it or not, there's a level beyond that. It's like the level that you can visually see that someone's at. I don't know. I, I'm trying to put this into words, but hopefully I'm making sense. But it, there's a level of confidence where you can tell that that guy thinks he's a shit No matter what I say to him, okay, he's not gonna. It's not gonna affect him. It's not gonna move. Yeah, uh, yeah, a yeah. He, he, meter. yeah, yeah. It's like, it's it's a point where it's like, like you can't say anything to that dude, right? And that's that's what we achieve. And it's silent. That <sighs> it, it's like a level of confidence where like I don't need to tell you I'm the best, you know? Because you know. Yeah, exactly. It's like. I don't know. It's, it's honestly, uh, I hope I get that feeling again, honestly, but looking back at it, you know, fuck all the earnings, <laughs> fuck all the, you know, number in a Twitter bio. Like that was one of the coolest feelings I've ever had. Let's go. Which, Even someone in the chat say he was behind you during the match against v Vitality and he has a massive souvenir. Of yeah. It. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah the crowd was, I mean, The, the whoever or who, whoever was sitting behind me i mean dude we were laughing <laughs> like in finals like we we're having we we're having fun you had the blast yeah like we were people probably like if you look from the outside in it probably looks like we're not taking it serious but it's like dude like we were that confident that it was like and it was still like we were trying our asses off right but it was just Like these guys can't touch us. Oh, and it was like, and, and that feeling of playing, like I always say that like playing in front of that many people, like it made me feel like I'll never be nervous again. You know, because I, dude, I was, you know, in school, I was scared to do a presentation in front of 30 kids. And now you're playing in front of 10,000 yeah. people yeah, and yeah. a thousand of people online. Yeah. And yeah, and it was, cool? it, yeah, it, it honestly changed a lot. That event. Oh là so. là. Les amis, je lui ai parlé de l'ESWC 2013 à Paris lors de la PGW. Peut-être que certains étaient dans le chat et il a dit des choses sur le public français. Alice, je te laisse le retranscrire parce que c'était la folie. 
Ouais, et euh, ça va peut-être vous plaire. Alors du coup, il disait qu'en plus, c'était le premier, premier vraiment euh, event énorme qu'ils qu avaient fait, surtout euh, en France. Et il disait qu'il y avait zéro place, mais que ça soit assis ou debout, euh, personne ne pouvait s'asseoir. Euh, tout le monde était les uns sur les autres. Euh, les mecs, ils tournissaient des devoirs à travers la tête des autres et tout, euh, pour pouvoir regarder tellement il y avait de monde. Et euh, il disait qu'en fait, euh, c'était ce genre de, de tournoi où avant d'y aller, il y avait tellement une préparation mentale et ils se disaient tellement qu'ils allaient gagner que tout ce qu'ils avaient à faire, c'était juste à exécuter le plan qu'ils avaient prévu et euh, à le, le refaire sur scène. Quoi. Et euh, donc avec cette mentalité, donc, ils, savaient, ils savaient très très bien qu'ils allaient pouvoir euh, gagner le, le tournoi. Et euh, en fait, ils disaient, euh, on s'est senti quand on l'a gagné, était pas, on était un peu comme des, comme des dieux. Quoi. Et en fait, il le dit, mais c'était pas, pas méchant ou c'était pas pour se la péter ou quoi que ce soit. C'est juste qu'en en fait, il n'avait même pas besoin de prouver aux autres qu'il était le meilleur parce que les autres le savaient déjà. Et, euh, et donc, il disait que c'était le meilleur sentiment, que genre, euh, il aimerait pouvoir un jour euh, ressentir ça, parce que bah, ça, ça vaut tout l'or du monde. Quoi. Parce que maintenant, que ce soit l'argent ou juste euh, les abonnés qu'il a sur, euh, sur Internet, il bah, n'y a rien qui se rapproche de, de cette sensation. Et il euh, y a quelqu'un dans le chat qui disait qu'il qu était derrière lui, et il a dit euh, « Ah, bah, peut-être que de derrière, vous avez l'impression qu'on n'était pas hyper sérieux, parce qu'on faisait que rigoler. » Mais en fait, ils étaient tellement concentrés que, euh, que ils étaient là pour tout donner quoi et c'est comme ça que qu'ils ont gagné et il racontait que cet event avait changé énormément de choses pour lui parce qu'avant il était un peu timide il avait un peu peur de prendre la parole ou quoi que ce soit même devant genre 30 personnes quand il fallait faire un exposé et que là non, il était ouais. passé devant euh, plus de des milliers de personnes et que maintenant bah il avait plus le tract ni quoi que ce soit c'était vraiment la folie. Là, on parle un petit peu de choses et tout comme ça. Euh, là, il a le vu de aux toilettes, tranquille. Les petits moments où Alice traduit et tout, ça permet même de se resservir un petit peu à boire et tout. J'espère que vous kiffez l'émission. C'est pas fini. On a encore beaucoup de choses à faire. Vraiment, je, je veux un petit instant là, comme ça déjà, pour euh, déjà remercier WeWard, les frérots qui nous suivent. Euh, N'hésitez pas, il y a le, chat, euh, le lien qui traîne dans le chat, etc. C'est une application où vous pouvez gagner des sous en marchant. Voilà, c'est gratuit. Donc, euh, c'est cool. Ils sponsorisent l'émission. Mais surtout, au-delà de ça, gros remerciement à Alice pour le travail qu'elle fait. Pour ceux qui parlent pas français, vous avez vu, vous pouvez, enfin, parle pas anglais, pardon, vous pouvez avoir la traduction directe, bien synthétisée, ça prend pas beaucoup de temps, nous, ça nous permet de continuer la discussion et tout bien, là, après, on va parler de Call of Duty Ghost, on va parler de plein d'autres choses, des franchises et tout, je vous vois dans le chat, il regarde le chat aussi, il a l'air de kiffer, ça se passe super et vraiment, j'espère que vous enjoyez de ouf, les gars, parce que ça se passe euh, vraiment super bien. Euh, là, il nous reste, on a encore du temps et tout, on est juste bien, donc, euh, les gars, j'espère que vous êtes cool, ça va toi, Alice, tout roule Bah ouais, écoute, ça prend des notes, ça écrit, ça écrit. Non, vraiment, je te dis, t'es vraiment, vraiment une craque. D'ailleurs, ça me permet pendant un petit instant de revenir sur un petit truc, mais c'est vrai que déjà, merci de soutenir Zachary USA. Et il euh, y a plein de mecs euh, un petit peu, tu vois, qui disent ouais, les soutiens, tout ça, machin. Mais sachez qu'en ayant réfléchi, c'est vraiment la meilleure formule pour faire en sorte que les mecs en live puissent comprendre, pour faire en sorte que tout le monde puisse kiffer et que sur la VOD puisse sortir vite et tout. Et nous, on est vraiment contents de ça. Et vraiment, ça, ça se passe super. Et merci pour le soutien. C'est super important que vous soyez là en nombre à regarder le live, à regarder la rediff et tout. Et on vous remercie pour ça. Uh, we spoke like about, uh, Black Ops 2 and stuff. We are gonna uh, speak about like one thing that uh, I think maybe shocked uh, many people at the time. Uh, at the beginning of Call of Duty Ghost, yeah. you dropped Clayster to take Karma. Yeah. Why? Um, Because you were winning everything, ESWC, UMG, MLG yeah. Anaheim, and Gfinity and stuff. You had a lot of titles and stuff. And you still took Karma. I mean, we just sort of sense the urge or sense that you know it was it was the lack of like seriousness okay from from clay i would say um and i'm talking you know it's it's tiny what i'm about to say but it was like you know ghost came out we're sitting there like dude we have to do this one week deal where we stream for a week straight okay you now each person has six hours a day um you know constant uh, it was for machinima and uh at that event i don't know it, it could have been the fact that we we're basically just living with each other for a week or two you had the gaming go since then? yeah but yeah yeah i mean well no it was a hotel okay <laughs> yeah um but we're like sitting there like an event's in two weeks you know and clay's messing around in the pubs like he's messing around in his stream like his shift And it was like, yeah, we're still playing like, like cranked, you know, we're playing modes that we wouldn't even play. That um, doesn't even care about yeah, the but, competition. But, but, but this is how serious we were. It was like to the point where it was like, we could all see that he was 
you know, and I want to, I want to talk to him about this because it, it, it seemed like he's not using his time effectively and knowing that, Hey, you know, a deadline's coming up. We got, we got a tournament and we're going to be behind because we can't scrim. And pretty much it was like as little as that. I was like, dude, this guy's using a fucking AK 12, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was like, that's not, that gun's not even good, you know, in a pub. And I was literally like, like, if, like me looking back, that was why I was okay with it. Um, but there was, I think there was other tension going on, but I mean, me, me and Pat talked about it. We're like, yeah, like if we would have just sat down and talked with them, like everything would have been handled. But the other, it's the other side of things too, was like Damon was on a team that we looked at on paper that are like, they could rival it, rival us. Okay. You know, it was envious at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're, they could be really good. Okay. And, uh, so we we're thinking two birds with one stone. Ah, so you were thinking, okay. We're, we're thinking Instead like, of and, and Damon was significantly better than like he, Damon looked like the best player in the game. Okay. Yeah. He was the usual monster. He was. Yeah. Well, no, I would say this is Damon. Like that one event that he played And he had a 1.57. So it was like, like highest KD wasn't even close. So we're thinking like, dude, like what if we just got Damon, you know, we don't know if Clay's going to go to that team, but we think Clay and Proofy, I don't think that's going to work. Okay. Yeah. So it was like, let's make that team horrible. Let's get rid of all the doubt on our team. And, you know, It's <laughs> yeah, it was, tac it was a tactical play. It's amazing to hear yeah. about this because yeah. at that time when I was yeah. I was a player myself, I was like, yeah. so, so we're winning everything I mean, just I, won. Yeah, we, we, you know, Clay always brings up like, oh, we would have won Ghost Champs if you kept me. Okay. I'm like, yeah, we probably would have, you know. But at the end of the day, that was, it was it, yeah, it was a it was a smart play to do. Um, But did it need to happen? Probably not. You know, probably should have just talked it out. I think, because uh, even though like, yeah, we won that with Damon, you know, Damon's one of my, I've won two world championships with him, right? It's like, I'm not a fan of like switching players. Okay. I'd rather like. Stability. I'd, yeah, I'd rather be known as a guy that like kept teammates and, you know, won with them. Try to figure shit out. You know, because because I think starting anew is always worse than you know fixing whatever's broken. Okay. So, yeah. Ça c'est intéressant parce que je lui demandais pourquoi est-ce qu'à l'époque ils avaient changé entre Clayster et Karma. Pour ceux qui s'en rappellent au début de Ghost, là on parle vraiment de l'époque, tu vois. En gros, il disait qu'au début de Ghost, Clayster il préférait streamer, être là, tu vois, dans les games publics, tu vois, il jouait à la K12 et tout, des armes de merde, il était pas très sérieux. Et en fait, en parallèle à l'époque, il y avait Envious avec Karma qui avait l'air super fort. Donc au lieu de discuter avec Clayster pour régler le problème et lui dire mec, joue un peu plus sérieusement, bah du coup ils se sont dit on va changer Clayster, on va récupérer Karma, ça va affaiblir Envy et en même temps nous, Karma à l'époque il avait fait un event euh, au début de, Go euh, de Ghost à 1,57 de ratio donc il disait c'était un putain de monstre et donc c'était une sorte de une pierre de coup on récupère un monstre on n'a pas réglé le truc avec Clayster et en plus on a faibli NVS et ça gagne et après il a parlé de stabilité le fait qu'il préférait ne pas kicker les gens tout ça machin et qu'ils auraient même sûrement gagné le coffre du Duty Championship avec Clayster mais que c'était euh, pensé de cette manière it's, it's crazy the, 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 the fact like, like this uh, Like uh, the the double you made like by weakening envious plus taking karma. Uh, yeah, it's impressive. Yeah, the the, the thing is like uh, despite this change, you continue to dominate. You even won the Call of Duty Championship. I think Pad described it as one of the easiest tournament he had to win. Yeah, I think that's his word. Yeah, I is mean, this finals, true to you? Finals was 30 minutes. <laughs> Three zero. Yeah, yeah, it was 30 minutes. I was sitting there like. You know, everyone's asking, why isn't he celebrating? Why isn't he celebrating? I was like, dude, I just prepared for basically a year. It was ever since we lost, uh, you know, we got fourth in Black Ops 2. I was like, I'm winning the next one, no matter what. Like, I'm going to do everything. And it was like, I literally prepared for a year for that moment, you know, and to win without contest. In 30 minutes, it was like, 
it was a bit clunky. Yeah, I was like, that's it. You know, I was like, you didn't have like, a I was like, that's the best you all can do. Yeah. Well, it was for me back in the day. Like I, I was more, I was, I was sort of like Goku. <laughs> like he doesn't enjoy winning the fight. He enjoys the fight. You know what I mean? Okay. Like I enjoyed the matches. I didn't really, winning was whatever, you know, but I enjoyed, I enjoyed the feeling of like pushing myself and seeing if I can clutch, seeing if I can, you know, come back from, if there's a deficit to see, you know. Like for example, at the G 2 final, Epsilon was winning 2-0, oh, John yeah. was massive and then you. Yeah. Well, that event was different. That event, everyone was jet lagged, you know. After we went down O2. Yeah, but you I still started, went to creep uh, bot mode. And well, 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 I started screaming at my teammates after we went down O2. I was like, wake up, wake up, wake up. We are about to lose. We're about, and I, like, this is me whispering, screaming. Like I was fucking screaming, screaming. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was, uh, and I, I feel like my teammates probably felt the same way. Like they enjoyed the matches. They enjoyed the fight more than the win. Okay. Yeah. So like the Call of Duty Championship win was easy, but not that enjoyable, even if it, oh, was, it was a big a, goal. It was a fucking massacre. Yeah. Um, but that, it just seemed like, you know, because so much time and effort went into that one moment and for it to be just... 30 minutes. Gone. But like, just, yeah, uh, it was just over. I'm going to say $100,000 to it. Like, it's, uh, it's well, nice. <laughs> I mean, sort of, <laughs> it's not really a hundred K it's more like 68 or so after taxes. Yeah. That's man. That's the one thing. So I'm doing content now. That's the one thing I'm fucking struggling with. Really? People think I'm so rich, you know, and I'm sitting there like, man, I fucking earned that. Of course I earned it. You know, it's not like someone donated me. 1.4 mil. Yeah, or you did yeah. not uh, irritate it uh, yeah. from your parents or something yeah. like this. Yeah, exactly. And the thing is, is like, dude, it's the government takes 30%. A lot of these tournaments are in California, which takes 10%. Nowadays, orgs are taking 30%. Really? Yeah. <sighs> dude, I won, I won MW champs. Yes. 300K. You know how much I ended up with? It scares me to put a number on it. Yeah. 150, maybe half. 100 and I don't know if it was 119 grand or 114 grand. Yeah. But now everyone, the, the, the problem that I'm, maybe it's just me being a shit streamer, but right now it's like no one will subscribe or donate. Like I never get don donations. Okay. And it's like, because people think, you know, why the fuck would you donate to someone who's already yeah. rich? Yes. Yeah, exactly. And I don't know. I gotta figure. I gotta crack that code because the code is to be here every single I'll, day, I'll, three, I'll, four, five hours. Well, I'm about to make. Way. I'm, I mean, dude, I've done 180 hours minimum Massive. in the last three months. Yeah, one month I did 220. So you have to. It, I I think mainly it's the time I'm streaming. Ah, oh. it's like late night. I bet you half my chats are fucking falling asleep. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. It's the classic one. Il nous a parlé un petit peu de sa victoire au Call of Duty Championship de Ghost. Alice, est-ce que tu peux nous dire ça? Parce que c'était vraiment putain intéressant d'avoir euh, la mentale d'un winner. Il a même parlé d'un truc sur le cash price. Ça, ça, vous avez kiffé ça. Ouais, euh, donc du coup, il disait que, euh, bah, que ça, ça s'est terminé en 3-0, 30 minutes, quoi. Et qu'il bah, s'était entraîné pendant un an pour ça. Donc euh, c'est pour ça qu'ils avaient pas l'air de célébrer quand ils ont gagné parce que ils étaient un peu en fait c'était un peu dégoûté quoi parce qu'ils étaient en mode bah c'est tout exactement enfin, pour on, vous dire il a dit je suis comme ça. Sangoku moi je me je n'aime pas la victoire du combat j'aime le combat et vu que en fait la victoire euh, finale c'était une finale de 3 euh, 3-0 30 minutes bah c'était un peu décevant ouais c'est ça et en fait il disait que lui il avait cette mentalité mais c'était pareil pour ses teammates et que du coup bah ils étaient tous un peu déçus de tout l'effort et tout ce temps que bah, qu'ils avaient perdu enfin pas vraiment perdu mais du coup bah c'est un peu triste, quoi. Ouais, voilà, investi. Et après, bah, il a parlé du, du content, c'est ça En disant ça. que euh, tout le monde pensait qu'il était super riche, mais qu'en fait, bah, il avait bossé pour pouvoir gagner tout cet argent. Il n'y avait pas eu d'héritage, il n'y avait pas eu tout ça. Et que surtout, les gens ne se rendent pas compte, mais sur des cash prizes, il y a, y a déjà la, la taxe de l'État qui prend 30%. Il euh, y a les structures ouais. qui se prennent aussi euh, une commission. 
Et en plus de ça, il y a certains états où il y a les, les, euh, les events qui se passent, qui se prennent aussi des commissions. C'est ça. Donc il racontait qu'il avait fait un, un event où il avait... C'était quoi C'était euh, 300K de cash prize, c'est ça Ouais, et il avait gagné final... le Call of Duty Championship de Modern Warfare, et il était censé prendre 300 000, et à la fin, il a pris... 145, c'est ça 114 ou 119 000. Ouais, voilà, donc... Euh... Un truc de dingue, quoi. Genre, dites-vous après... qu'il a perdu quasiment la moitié, enfin perdu, en gros, et, euh, entre les taxes, le, la structure, tout ça, machin, bah, t'es censé gagner 300k, à la fin, tu n'es avec 120k. Bah, après, 120k, c'est quand même énorme, mais... <rire> ça... C'est, c'est ça, ça fait, un peu, ça fait un peu mal, quand même. Et après, il disait qu'il avait un peu de mal avec le, le contenu, parce qu'il streamait, mais que du coup, bah, les gens pensaient tellement qu'il était riche qu'il n'y avait pas de, de donations sur, euh, sur ses streams. Et il racontait du coup qu'il avait fait plus de 130 heures de, de stream euh, par mois à peu près, mais que peut-être il faisait ça la nuit et que du coup son chat s'endormait, donc ça devait peut-être être la raison pour laquelle il n'arrivait pas trop euh, ouais, à gérer ça. Qu'il avait un peu de mal à avoir des subs, etc. Et je lui ai dit, bah mec, faut streamer tout le temps, tout le temps, tout le temps, et ça commencera à faire parce qu'il a pris sa retraite, mais ça on va en parler juste après. After, uh, like, uh, at the end of Call of Duty Ghost and your time uh, at Heavy Genesis, like the, the domination started to fade a little bit, started like to be after Call of Duty Champion championship and stuff just why uh we weren't getting paid oh yeah we were promised like a way bigger contract um i think it's also the cod champs curse it was it's just like when you win that amount of money <laughs> you know all the little tournaments don't really mean much okay um, so like going for 20 uh, 20 000 was harder after winning uh, <laughs> yeah the big growth. but it was like We were, so we went to Evil Geniuses because we, we knew that they, at the time they were like the biggest org, um, or at least with a lot of money, you know, and we felt like, you know, no matter what, we deserve a bigger contract. I think at the time we were getting, I don't know, I think it was, we went from the first contract I was on was zero per month. Okay. Second one was $500 per month. Third one was the one we won. I think it was af- actually after champs was fifteen hundred. Okay. But we were like, dude, like there are other teams getting paid more. Of course, it's yeah. a little bit cheap. I, I was thought yeah. the complexity was paying more. No, no. And uh, on EG, we went there because we were promised a lot. Okay. Like you know, four grand. Okay, four so grand. Four, the four, it was like three or four grand, and that was like a lot back then. And pretty much there's a whole bunch of like legal issues and all this stuff. And we just kept getting the runaround. Like, uh, like we'll talk next month, you know? And pretty much it was like, you know, Damon had Bella on the way. Um, I was sitting there living with my parents, you know? Uh, it just like that. It still wasn't enough to accomplish our goal. Okay. I, well, we had, a, we had already dropped out at the time, but yeah. it was like, man, like we did all, like we all sort of, I bet you we were all sort of feeling like, dude, we dropped out for fucking $1,500 a month. Like this is a cup of noodles. This, this can't even, this can barely pay rent. You know? I mean, shit, my parents were charging me for rent. Really? Yeah. You were paying a part of the rent? Yeah, it was like, I mean, it just had a principle. They didn't need the money. Of course. It was like, it was like, yeah, it was like, if you're over 18 and living in our house, you got to pay $600 a month. So I was like, dude, like 600 out of 1500, you know, you're left with 900 <laughs> for the rest of the month. Okay. So yeah. yeah. Um, Even if you have like the earning from tournaments and stuff, it, yeah. it wasn't comfortable. Yeah, exactly. And it was just like, dude, like we all just sort of bummed but then also angry at oh. the same time. because we had multiple, I mean, we could have gone to Navi. We could have made our own fucking team. Yes. With the uh, MLG. Um, and then we could have made our, our own team by ourselves. There's plenty of people that were like, like, Hey, we'll financially support you guys. You know, we'll get this with, we'll get this going. And it was like, out of all the moves we could have done, we we're all just like pissed because now we're stuck in a contract And, if you just and they, they won't give us what we want, you know, and it turned it, out it, to be the worst. Yeah, exactly. It was like, we picked the worst one. So pretty much that team broke up because I mean, there's a whole situation with, with, uh, Bella, 
and you know holly and i was like we, it was like a tournament that holly was going to be do with bella um we we're like hey you know straight to damon we're like like dude we you have to go to this of course you can't like fuck the tournament you know and we're like you know can we play the fill-in and i guess that pissed him off um but at the time i was like you know put yourself in damon's shoes It was a nice gesture. Yeah, well, well, it was, it was, an, that was what we meant by it. But it was like, I don't know, his boys didn't take the one tournament off for him. Because ah, okay. it, it's like, it's like, you know, if we play with a fill in, that would fuck with your head. You're about to have a kid. You're about to be spending, have to spend a lot more money. And your teammates sitting, sitting there like borderline replacing you, you know? So. And it was like, you know, if we were getting paid at the time, probably none of that shit happens. So. It's uh, like a, a sad ending, I would say, yeah. to a dynasty. Yeah. No, it was definitely, uh, it was too quick. You know, it was it, it was all over too fast. You, you still managed to win the ESWC at the end of the year. Yeah, that's because I destroyed that team. <laughs> Mental warfare. Asensio, you, know? you remember? Yeah, I, I mean, bef I told my team before the tournament, I was like, dude, I'm probably going to leave after this. Like, this is a shit show. You know, we were playing with Dito. Uh, Damon already left. Um, I, I told the team, I'm like, I'm probably going to leave after this. So at the tournament, I was talking to Formal. Fucking his teammates saw me talking to Formal mid on Saturday night or something like that. Friday night, I don't know what it was. And uh, their team imploded, and they lost the next day. Okay. So, <laughs> so literally, just by me having a conversation, literally, probably they were a, a way better team. We w would have lost if we played them. What was the team at the time? Envy. Uh, it was oh, okay. it was Merc, Nameless, uh, Formal, and I, I don't know. I don't think it was Jcap. Study maybe. Or J maybe it was Study. Yeah. yeah. I don't know what it was, but. They saw that, and the whole team just collapsed. <sighs> yeah, so crazy. Um, and I didn't, I didn't mean to do that, but that was just, I was sitting there like, dude, we just got gifted a fucking tournament. Okay, like, let's go. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you lost to a French team. Huh? You know that the fact you lost to a French team, Asensia with Zeiler at the time. I don't know if I remember him. It was one of the biggest like uh, upset the French scene uh, has known. <sighs> Did we? Yeah. I think it was in a group stage or something. Ah. It didn't matter. You didn't lose. The yeah, bracket. I always, I had, I've always had that issue. It's just, I always get better as the tournament goes on because I get more and more in the, into the zone, you know. So the zone. Yeah. No, we we were pretty bad on Fridays. We weren't good on Fridays. That's for, that's for damn sure. So. <laughs> the classic American bombing on Friday. On a là pour vous dire, on a parlé un petit peu de la fin de Evil Geniuses, donc du coup euh, la fin de leur règne un petit peu. Et euh, Alice va vous résumer ça, mais c'est passionnant parce qu'ils ont eu des problèmes de contrat. Ouais, en gros, il euh, y a eu pas mal de contrats parce que, enfin, de problèmes, pardon, euh, parce que euh, chez euh, IG, du coup, en fait, euh, c'était une grosse structure et on leur avait promis beaucoup, beaucoup de choses. Et au final, euh, le premier mois, il a rien gagné. Le deuxième, c'était genre 500 dollars et le troisième, après, c'était genre 1500 dollars, un truc comme ça. Donc, en fait, on leur avait vendu beaucoup de rêves pour rien du tout. Euh, parce que bah, déjà, ils auraient pu soit créer euh, leur propre team et ça se serait beaucoup mieux passé, ou alors rejoindre d'autres équipes, comme euh, par exemple, ils disaient genre euh, Navy. Et au final, ils se sont retrouvés bah, à être forcés de rester chez, chez EG ouais, euh, sans, sans pouvoir réellement gagner leur vie. Puis, euh, comme ils disaient, il bah, y avait Karma qui avait, euh, qui avait sa petite fille qui allait naître bientôt. Euh, lui, il, devait, il vivait chez ses parents et ses parents lui avaient dit... Bah, comme t'es majeur, il faut que tu nous payes un loyer. Donc, il devait donner 600 dollars de, de loyer. Ouais, il donnait donc, 600 dollars par mois à ses parents pour vivre chez eux, passer 18 ans. C'est ça. Donc, euh, sur 1500 euros, bah, ça fait plus grand-chose. Euh, et du coup, bah, c'est un, un peu pour ça que ça s'est complètement effondré. Quoi. Ça s'est complètement effondré. Et ensuite, euh, à l'ESWC, ils savaient qu'ils avaient quitté cette équipe. Ils ont quand même réussi à gagner parce qu'il avait fait une, un tournoi de fou. Il expliquait que très souvent, ils n'étaient pas bons les vendredis et samedis, qu'ils étaient meilleurs au fur et à mesure que le tournoi avait lieu. Et que c'est là-bas qu'ils avaient commencé à discuter avec Formal, ce qui avait fait que Envy avait crash parce que les teammates de Formal avaient vu Formal discuter avec Crim6 et compris que plus ou moins, ça voulait dire que 
ça risquait de quitter. On Advanced Warfare, you finally joined like the most popular team of the scene, Optic Gaming, first with Nateshot, formal and scup, and then with Karma uh, later on. Many uh, were like quite critical of Nateshot, especially uh, because of the Call of Duty Championship. D do you think it was deserved or it was a little bit too hard from the community at the time? Um, what, at AW Champs? Um, no, I, I, I think it was way too harsh. Way too harsh because I felt like that tournament, Scump, I believe it was Scump, mm -hmm. was the only one who played like up to par okay. with how they can play. Like I played bad, Formal played bad, and Nate played bad. I mean, I can't really knock Nate. Yeah, he used the HBR, right? The biggest thing is like, dude, if he would have used a gun that was a submachine gun, right? then I wouldn't have had that big of issue with it. But mm -hmm. when you switch from, when a sub player switches to an AR, yeah. all of a sudden, it, the whole dynamic changes. Now it's like, it can still work, but now your other ARs have to play more aggressive. You know? And it was funny because at the time, it was like, that was the exact opposite of what our ARs, I mean, it was me and Formal basically ARing. We needed to play actually slower. Okay. We were playing too fast. So I think that that progressively, and I mean, that that sort of just made it worse. Um, I don't think it was the HBR at all. I think, honestly, just, you know, three-fourths of the team didn't play well. Okay. So. And I saw how it was, like, to join Optic, because Optic Gaming, we knew they were, like, the most popular team, the most followed one and stuff. Yeah. Like, how was it for you to finally, after beating them for many years, to just join them and, like, encounter that big well, fan base and well, have all that hype and stuff? I was never really in it for that. Okay. I stole the same goal, which, you know, right? It was, like, the second month. And I saw the, the YouTube stats and all that stuff. And I was just like, God damn, we, I thought I was making money on complexity. You know, like the social media stuff is just next level amount of money, you know, compared to competing. And uh, yeah, no, so it was sort of the same goal. I just brought everything over. Okay. Um, there's a lot of things uh, like I had to teach a lot of different they it was never like an individual play okay it was always like a team tactic like for example like you know i i've, I've always made the joke of like an x cross okay like uh you know i had to teach scump an x cross that's that was the joke i've always made um but pretty much it was just like a you know rather than say My elbows are the players, right? Rather than just looking straight, it'd be better to do this. And that way it's like, if they cross a certain point on the map, right? Like someone is going to see them, whether it's, but in either way, it's going to be an angle that they're not expecting because it seems unorthodox. Like it seems like, you know, why is this player holding this angle? Oh, it's because he had another player here watching his push. You know, so it was like, it was like little team dynamics like that. Um, also a lot of the, the mental stuff and then a lot of the, you know, mind games okay. with the, with the opponents. Like sometimes it's okay to take a risk in an S and D appear to look fucking stupid. You know, it probably won't work. But if it does. Yeah. Well, if it does work, right, then you're just going to blow them out. Say it's like a four man rush on defense right it was like you know that's probably not going to work but if it does we're going to blow them out and if it doesn't they're going to be mind fucked the rest of the game they're going to be worried about that one push that we've done you know and it's like you it's, told them that it is okay like to sometimes just well, go for that? It, well it's like it, it, it's okay to like you know you don't you don't want to you want to keep them on their heels like put like in the middle of a map You know, think what your teammate's going to think or, or your, your opponent is going to be thinking, right? And if we do the same thing, like, you know, that's readable. Yes. They can counter that. doesn't matter how good we are. You're expected. Right? Yeah, like, let's make it as unpredictable as possible for our opponents, you know? 
And it was like the little things like before I joined, like that team never had that. You know, and the shit, I, I, I would say that Call of Duty never even had a lot of this stuff. Like, like you, I would, you almost had to tough them some things that look basic to you because you were in complexity. Yeah, well, stuff, yeah. But yeah. that were revolutionary or maybe new yeah. at that time. Yeah, exactly. And it was like all these other teams, like other teams would be doing it or doing stuff like that, you know, team tactics. But it was just like this, you know, team wasn't doing any of them. <laughs> Because, really? well, yeah, I mean, dude, they were focused on content. And I can't, and then right when I saw the money come in, or when I saw the YouTube stuff, I was sitting there like, dude, well, that's fucking why. That's why they don't care about, you know, holding an X cross or whatnot. Like, you know, so I couldn't really blame them. But, and then my time on Optic, it was, it was diff. It, that's where I found out it was difficult doing both. Okay. Yeah. Like, uh, like you said, you're going to end up pretty average at both. Yeah. Yeah. So, but, but you still managed to dominate, like uh, when uh, Karma came in after the the Call of Duty Championship, you still uh, yeah. we still won a shitload of tournaments. Yeah, no, the I mean that was our team is stacked. Uh, we basically just won, you know, off of talent. Really? Yeah, like not we were, of uh, teamwork. I mean, we 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 definitely have teamwork, but it would never be like set up, practiced teamwork. Like it would just happen out of the blue randomly, you know, it like our, our, like that team had rated, you know, skill nine or 10 out of 10. Yes. Um, I would say that confidence was like a 10 out of 10. I, and, and, and I literally put, I'm putting them in, in this order, you know, cause shit, I, I might even put confidence before skill. Um, but like, You know, a whole bunch of all that shit. And then teamwork was maybe a five out of 10. Yeah. It was like, I mean, it was just, it was the way that team played compared to the way complexity played was way different. Okay. It was way different. I mean, dude, we on complexity would, we'd practice, you know, planting the bomb, you know, two, two to three feet in a different spot. You know, what can we do? How can we change where we watch the bomb now? How are we going to play? By two feet, you know? On optic, it was like, nah, let's go to the gym. <laughs> let's fucking watch a movie, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> so, hey, so like when you were in complexity, we were like a nerd and stuff, going private yeah. matches, doing oh, strategies yeah. no, and we stuff. Were, and then, uh, I, I was as pale as I ever was on that team. My, I... <laughs> <laughs> my, my my skin color was dude i looked like something out of twilight bro back then <laughs> i was a fucking vampire but yeah it was uh yeah it was just different i wouldn't say the times are better or worse it was just different like the the feeling of it was it, it wasn't the same so it's about because you explain of it you wanted to in the team optic quand il a rejoint Optique, etc., après, il a parlé de Nate Shot et tout, je vais laisser Alice vous le dire, mais en gros, là, il explique qu'en fait, chez Optique, ils avaient un, une équipe tellement forte, vous vous en rappelez, ça a duré trois ans, Formal, Scump, Cream Six et Karma, en gros, ils étaient tellement forts et ils gagnaient tellement d'argent avec les contenus à l'époque que... Ils s'entraînaient pas aussi sérieusement que chez Complexity. Chez Complexity, c'était des nerds et tout, tu vois, ils étaient là, ils strataient en privé et tout, mais chez, Complex... enfin, chez Optique, ils gagnaient quasiment que avec euh, le pur talent perso et la confiance. 10 sur 10 en confiance, 10 sur 10 en talent perso, 5 sur 10 en teamwork. Et que c'était vraiment surtout ça. Et qu'à côté de ça, eux, ils faisaient du contenu, ils allaient euh, 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 faire du sport, regarder des films et tout, machin. C'était complètement différent, mais ça marchait parce qu'ils avaient gagné plein d'événements. Qu'est-ce euh, qu qu'il avait ajouté euh, avant ça, s'il te plaît, Alice euh, Ouais, donc euh, sur euh, Nateshot, pour revenir sur ça, il disait qu'ils euh, les avaient trouvés vraiment euh, hyper critiques euh, parce qu'ils avaient tous mal joué. Euh, et que s'ils si, euh, si avaient pu changer la dynamique avec des meilleures armes, bah, ça, sera, ça se serait peut-être passé différemment, mais que, ouais, non, ils, les avaient, ils, avaient, trouvé, ils avaient trouvé les gens un peu, un peu du, vraiment euh, critiques avec Nature, alors qu'il n'était pas le seul dans l'équipe euh, à avoir merdé, quoi. Et oui. après, non, euh, pour, euh, pour revenir vite fait sur, euh, sur Optic, il disait qu il était, que lui, il n'avait pas été là juste pour la popularité de la structure, quoi. C'était juste parce que, bah, voilà, on, le, on lui avait proposé qu'il trouvait que c'était une équipe qui était genre euh, stackée et qu'il pouvait faire son temps là-bas. C'est ça. Et surtout, euh, du coup, il, a, il en a un peu parlé en disant que bah, lui, quand il arrivait, il a dû un peu tout leur apprendre parce que du coup, c'était un peu différent 
euh, de chez euh, Complexity parce qu'eux ils étaient hyper axés sur le contenu alors que lui bah, le contenu bah, il... enfin pas qu'il y connaissait grand chose c'est juste que bah, c'est là qu'il s'est rendu compte pour lui que c'était un peu difficile d'être bon aux deux c'était soit t'étais moyen en étant fort au jeu et... enfin moyen au jeu et du coup et moyen en contenu soit t'étais fort au jeu et tu faisais que ça quoi donc il leur a un peu rappris tout, tout ce que lui pensait être les bases euh, et pour, pour être un peu genre imprévisible machin et tout euh, mais du coup ouais voilà donc il disait que c'était pas pire ou meilleur que chez Complexity c'était juste, juste différent, euh, ouais. différent exactement exactement pour vous dire là il est en train de commander Uber Eats Starbucks A little Uber Eats order I need my coffee you need a coffee I need my coffee just go ahead this right here is my breakfast <laughs> no. you, you have a bad sleep schedule because of your stream no yeah I mean well Honestly, it's just I'm addicted to the racing stuff, and I can't get off. And I know no one cares, no one watches. The Formula Formula One well, is pretty popular in France, but I I have to well, admit the rest on, of racing. Yeah, yeah, it's big on YouTube. That's what I realized. Um, but streaming, not so much. Yeah. So, but I can't fucking get off. I Why don't you try like the Formula One game? Maybe you don't like it. I've tried it. It's just fake. Ok. It's not fucking. It's not some good simulator. It's not like, dude, I'm in a fucking thousand horsepower car that weighs less than me. You know? So you're uh, not gonna follow the Formula One Grand Prix no, uh, no, no, in, no, in no. Austin? I, no, it's I, today. I, yeah, I know. I, uh, that's a whole different story. Uh, I've, I've been egoed so many times by sponsors and all this shit recently. So it's like, I'm, dude, I'm not even gonna fucking ask. To try to go. I'm, I'm actually, I'm an American F1 fan pre Netflix. Okay. So you're an old guy. Yeah. For following yeah. since a couple years, way before yeah. Netflix. Since all the way back like 2012. Okay. So, um, yeah, no, it shit kills my fucking dude. I'll be sitting there like actually knowing the ins and outs of like, you know, racing, how cars work, you know, what's, you know, good, where there's, You know, it, it like, like, and then I see a whole bunch of content creators go and I'm like, if I were to go fucking ask them, I'm like, what's the difference between on camber and off camber, you know? And it's like, I'm sitting there like, dude, and those tickets are fucking expensive, dude. They're like 20, they're, no, they're, yeah, they're, I think they're like 20 or 40 grand. What? Yeah. Yeah. The paddock passes. Dude, they're fucking expensive. 40 grand to And have the paddock passes? Yeah, well, to just walk in the... I mean, dude, the, I went to Coda, <laughs> the American like F1 GP, um, in 2019. I literally pissed right next to Valtteri Bottas. Okay. Yeah. Saw his cock. <laughs> <laughs> Il a vu la bite de Valtteri Bottas. Right? Yeah. Nice. Like... No, but I was walking around, got shoulder checked by by Lando. He put on his hood. Let's go. There's some, you know, some people walking around and stuff. Literally was sprinting through the crowd like Peter Parker or something like that. Freaking went like that. But I'm still shocked. I'm like, I'm like, I understand. I know how it is, you know. 20 what, what, grand for a ticket? Yeah, I don't know about Dites that. Plus grand, en gros, ce qu'il I mean, you, you, you get really good seats. Les meilleurs, euh, les meilleures chaises, en gros, les meilleurs, les meilleurs accès à la Formule 1 pour un week-end, ça coûtait 20 000 dollars. 20 000 dollars pour pouvoir accéder un peu au paddock, tout ça, machin. C'est, c'est, it's crazy. Like, one of the things, uh, because the chat uh, noticed it, have you heard about uh, the GP Explorer? Is that the, what's that, is that... I think we call it the F1. Is that the F1 manager? No, it's, um, it was like uh, something that uh, was held in France. Uh, two or three weeks ago, it was. Uh, oh, that thing! Yeah, invite me next year, please, please. <laughs> you want to be there next year? Fuck yeah, dude! It's Squeezy. Squeezy is a big French Fuck YouTuber, yeah, and he's bro. the guy who uh, who made it. Like, who... you guys send me his Twitter after. I'm, I'm <laughs> on the crowd. You saw it went like up to one million viewers on Twitch. Yeah, a million viewers. Yeah. What well, What was it they did on the what the French? I don't know that track all that too well. It's uh, Le Castellet called. No, it's not Le Castellet. C'est où déjà? C'est Le Mans. Le Mans, the 24 hours of If Le Mans. If it's Le Mans, I know how to drive Le Mans. Uh, you know how to drive? You made yeah, it yeah. in Simulacy, but it was like this. I know Le Mans. Okay. Like this. Yeah. No, I, I, I was wondering because I, I saw the final the celebration and it was that last chicane, you know, the, the slow end one. 
And I was like, that's the fucking Le Mans. Yes, it's Le Mans and it's all French content creators. And then Formula 3. Really? Yeah. Formula 4. Formula 4. Yes. Even better. Yeah, it looks really good. It had a, a massive production. No, I'd probably be pretty... I'm pretty good. You're good at uh, racing? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I do the, the track stuff with my car too. Because, I mean, because Sylvain, which was the winner, he's a really good racer. Yeah. The thing is, the, the Formula stuff, right, is... I mean, the one thing I truly had to, like, learn and get used to was the, like, left foot trail braking. Okay. Um, but in Formula cars, you don't fucking, you don't trail break. Because these are all, like, fast, twitchy, you know, stuff that I excel at. You know, I'm actually, on iRacing stuff, I'm way better in the faster cars than the slower cars. Okay, okay. Yeah, so. Je lui montrais un peu le GP Explorer, il a dit qu'il kiffait, qu'il aurait aimé participer, que l'année prochaine, il kifferait y aller, tout ça, machin. Bon, pas besoin vraiment de traduire cette partie, mais grosso modo, vous avez compris qu'il a une grosse passion pour la course, et ça, c'est grave cool. Uh, from Black Ops 3 onwards, um, the scene has changed with the arrival of uh, the Cold War League, uh, a format with, like, regular matches, less volatility in the tournaments and stuff. Did you like this change? Uh, or did you think it hurt the scene as a competitor was it better for you mm, i would say i didn't mind it last year because we actually won mm -hmm. so i mean we, well we didn't win a tournament but we still won stuff so we still played but this year i realized how bad it was when it was like halfway through the season it was like going into that pro-am i was like dude we played fucking three matches on land I was like, dude, we played three matches. A total, it was like 10 maps. Okay. And then I would look and see who's, you know, who's done the best, which was FaZe. And I was like, dude, they played like 30 plus. I was like, at this point, like, I was like, dude, we're going to have to get better fast. You know, it was like, in order to turn this, like, it's almost to the point where you play so little compared to the teams that went like if you lose and get knocked out right away which i've never experienced that but it was like man we've played absolutely nothing compared to the, the teams that have played a lot so because think, the team winning go further in the tournament yeah. so they play even more so, so they get even more experience and yeah stuff. exactly so the problem is is like later on in the year it's like you know you're playing a team that has three times the amount of experience on this game than you do so that's a huge fucking issue Which makes it hard to... I like mean, and, and yeah, you can only... Realistically, you can only blame yourself, but I don't know if the layout should be like that. Okay. So it was like a tough year this year uh, in New York uh, with uh, New York Subliners. Did I have a tough year? It's a question. Oh. <laughs> this is an affirmation. I would I'm, say I'm asking. This, this year made me okay with quitting. Okay. It was that bad. It was... Uh, Yeah, it was fucking, I mean, you know, what we, did you watch what we talked about on the flank? Mm -hmm. uh, me, Zuma. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, the podcast, yeah, yeah. but I didn't watch it. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, that that one had like fucking 16,000 viewers, you know, us spilling the beans, because everyone's like, holy shit, this is bad. Like, that was just some of it. Okay. That was like what I could, what we could all summarize quickly. Um, There's a lot more shit. And it was just, I, it was just, honestly, the the ending result wasn't all too bad. You know, we still qualified for champs. We did the impossible, all that stuff. Um, but that that one year probably took years off my life. Like, mentally, I've probably been in the worst spot, you know. Like, there were problems within the team, maybe within the organization. Problem within the team, problem within the coaches, problem within the organization. There was a problem with quite literally fucking everything. Okay. Yeah. It was not good. Okay. Yeah. I, I hope you still have a good uh, opinion of Paco. No. No? No. Okay. So there were like that many problems. Because remember what I was talking about before? Yes. Um, let me ask you this, right? The way after it all happened, I got dropped. I'm like, fuck, I'm not going to be in the league. I realized I'm like, dude. Paco's team with 10 players, right? Why have they all lost their minds? Every single fucking one has gone either off the rails or complete dog shit. Okay. You know, 
what, when you look at it, the Cold War subliners team, and then you look at our team, like everyone lost their minds. It's like, that ain't really, that's fucking weird. Okay. You know, that is weird. Um, and granted, you know, not every single one out of those 10 could be, you know, blamed on him. Okay. But I could say the same thing. I could say like, why didn't, you know, out of those people, like he could have helped them. Okay. And now that's, that's my one big issue with Paco is like, I don't know if, you know, he was playing for stats or whatnot, playing to get a better contract, all that shit. Like at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter. My biggest issue was like, dude, he didn't, he was like me before Halo. Okay. He was like, there's so many opportunities to make a teammate better or help a teammate out or do all this shit. And it was just like blatantly not fucking caring. Okay. I mean, one time Paul got on a fucking Uber. He was in an Uber accident, like a car crash. Which is uh, and, bad? Yeah. And it was just no reply to the chat. Nothing. It was like, you know, Paul could have lost his, he could have died. And it was just like, the next day we got on, obviously he went to, he had a long night. And the next day we got on and it was like, I was like, Paco, do you even know what happened last night? No. I'm like, dude, so 45 messages on your phone, you fucking ignored all of them. And it was just like, and it's like the little things like that as a teammate will speak volumes to your other teammates. Yeah. You know? Because you're supposed to care because, a little bit. Yeah, because it's like, dude, I, I wasn't in the car crash, right? Like that pissed me the fuck off, but I can't even imagine what Paul was thinking. Paul was probably thinking I could have just died and this guy would have felt nothing, you know? And it was just like, that's the one advice I had to Paco. It's like, dude, you need to care about the people you're playing with. And if you don't, they won't be able to bond with you. And yeah. if they won't be able to bond with you, you won't be able to win. Because Period. they won't Period. give their best or they yeah. won't be able to do so. Yeah, exactly. It was just, yeah, it's just like you're another player to them now. Yeah. So Definitely yeah. not cool. Yeah, definitely. But that's, and then the whole fucking Algeria thing, which that right there, I've never lost a tournament over a joke. You know, like um, I've never lost a tournament over a joke that was. It was so like, I was making fun of myself. Okay, what you was know? the joke? The joke was, you know, it was basically I said two sentences. You know, we're kicking around a little tiny, we're trying to kick a little football, soccer ball in a, a trash can. That's what we always do. That was our little game. Classic. And uh, pretty much he was wearing an Algerian jersey or, or, or I don't know what it was, but I was making fun of myself by saying like, you know, where even is Algeria? It was like, I who gives a fuck about Algeria? And then afterwards I said... Like, I don't know anyone from Algeria. Okay. You know, I can't name one thing about Algeria, you know? And it was like, that's my ignorance. That's me, you know, being an ignorant American. Okay. You know, like, but the that's way- That's what I, you said at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. No, it, and, but the way I was saying it, like, it was like, you know, I'm a dumbass saying it. And I, I was just trying to get him talking. And it, it was like, he- went full cold shoulder. Okay. Didn't, didn't show up to team dinners, meetings, nothing like that. And no one knew, no one could really figure out why. And if I would have known, I would apologize like straight up big time, like big time, you know, but we played the whole entire tournament with him just having that weight on his shoulders. You know, when he could have just talked to me, he could have just talked to fucking anyone. And it's, and then, I knew something was wrong when we got back and we we're, you know, it was, we, we had a long break. So I took like a week off. So the first week back, I was shit. And he was like laughing at me, getting pissed on. Okay. I was, I was playing bad and I was rusty. And he was like laughing at, you know, me just shitting the bed. So I knew I was like, dude, what the fuck is going on? You know? And then he finally told me, I'm like, dude, what? 
I was like, so like, uh, you're like, dude, that little joke triggered two you. Two sentences. Time. And then that's, I think that's why he wanted me, me dropped. Okay. You know? And I was like, dude, I'm like, bro, like how it's, because he claimed it was me being racist. Right? Okay. I'm like, dude, I don't know the first fucking thing. I was like, logically, how the fuck can I be racist when I don't even know? It's like me. It's it's like being it's like me hating a Martian mm. alien civilization. It's like, dude, I don't even, you know, I know Algeria is in Africa. I don't know anything else about it. Yeah, a classic like, American people they are bad yeah. at geography. Yeah, but I mean, I'm pretty. I, I'm actually pretty good at it now. You know, now I've, know I've, that I've, you learned a little. Well, bit. no, I've been grinding GeoGuessr. I'm a diamond now. <laughs> okay, I'm like 800. You so know. now you're good. Yeah, yeah, but it's just like it, it, it sounds like uh, it's so uh, fucking stupid. It sounds what like it a misses, uh, yeah. uh, understanding went really far. Yeah. Oh, it well, it went next level. He thought I was saying fuck your whole bloodline, fuck your family tree, yeah, okay. fuck everything about you. Uh, that's that's how he took case. it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I was just like, man, like, it's sad. I was like, dude. I was like, Paco, you know me too. Like, I make dark humor jokes, you know. But I, you know, I don't mean it. I don't mean any of it like, and that was, that was the worst part. I was like, dude, we've been best bros. And all of a sudden it's that cold. You're, you know, okay. knife to my back. So it was shitty. Well, là, c'est une grosse... I wish I didn't say it. Obviously. Là, c'est une grosse partie, les amis. Ça parle un petit peu euh, du problème qu'il a pu avoir avec Hydra, notamment du fait qu'il ait fait euh, une blague un peu limite qui a été mal prise. Je pense que Alice va vous résumer ça correctement pour ceux qui écoutent. Ouais, alors déjà, juste pour revenir sur ta question, du coup, sur le format, euh, lui, en fait, au départ, il s'en était pas vraiment rendu compte, mais c'est à partir de cette année qu'il s'est rendu compte qu'en fait, le format, il était vraiment pas ouf du tout, parce que du coup, ceux qui gagnaient, bah, plus tu gagnais, plus tu jouais, et puis si tu performais pas hyper bien, bah, du coup, tu jouais pas trop, donc il y avait un peu une sorte de... Euh Enfin, c'était pas hyper juste, quoi. Donc, pour lui, il disait, mais en même temps, bon, si, si on jouait mieux, bah, tu jouais plus. Donc, en même temps, t'as qu'à en prendre à toi. Ouais, voilà, c'est ça. Les équipes qui allaient loin, elles avaient plus de maps, plus d'expérience et l'écart se creusait tout le temps. C'est ça. Mais au final, ils ont réussi à se qualifier. Donc, euh, I guess, c'était pas trop mal, comme il disait. Euh, après, pour revenir sur son expérience, du coup, avec Paco, bah, il disait que il y avait tellement de problèmes pour tout en fait il y avait problème au niveau du coaching de l'équipe de la structure et que euh, même s'ils sont qualifiés au final bah mentalement ça lui a tout pris et que l'expérience était tellement vraiment pas ouf que c'est ce qui l'a forcé enfin pas forcé mais c'est ce qui lui a fait prendre la décision de prendre sa, sa retraite quoi et il disait même qu'il en avait parlé dans son dans son podcast c'est ça mais euh, en gros il racontait que en fait avec Paco ça s'était vraiment pas pas hyper bien passé surtout sur euh, sur la fin et après il a même dit euh, bah tous les teammates de Paco bah, soit ils ont soit ils ont terminé en étant archi nuls soit ils ont arrêté donc pour lui c'est pas une coïncidence et il disait qu'en fait bah Peut-être que c'était pas forcément que de sa faute aussi, quoi, mais qu'il aurait pu changer la donne pour essayer d'être sûrement un meilleur teammate. Ouais, c'est ça, il donnait l'exemple a... d'un des teammates, Paul, qui avait eu un problème, enfin un accident, et en gros, ce qu'il disait, c'est que Hydra, on lui envoyait plein de messages pour lui dire, et en fait, il a tout ignoré, il a même pas envoyé un petit message en mode Ouais, est-ce que ça va T'es good dans ton accident C'était un des exemples. Ouais, c'est ça, et exactement. Et il a même, euh, il, il s'est même comparé à lui en disant, bah, en fait, il, il est un peu comme moi quand j'étais avant euh, Elo ah bah, et que je savais pas, genre, jouer en, en, en team, quoi, et que il s'en foutait un peu de tout. Et même euh, quand il est parti, il lui a donné un petit conseil en mode, bah, essaye d'être, euh, d'être un peu plus là pour tes autres teammates, essaye de t'investir un peu plus, quoi, parce que c'est ça qui, qui mène à, à la perte, quoi, parce que ça, on a l'impression que tu t'en tu fous de tout, quoi. Et, et donc après, pour il... la partie un petit peu de la blague. Ouais, bah en fait, euh, du coup, euh, il disait c'est la première fois de ma vie que j'ai perdu à cause d'une blague. En fait, euh, avant les, les tournois, il s'amusait un peu genre à mettre euh, à mettre des, des paniers avec un ballon de, de foot quoi, et que euh, donc euh, Paco portait un maillot de, de l'Algérie. Puis lui, pour rigoler, comme il disait au début, que en fait, il était archi nul en, en géographie et que c'était un peu le cliché de l'Américain qui savait pas placer des trucs sur une sur euh, sur la terre quoi. Et du coup. Euh, pour lui, il se moquait de lui-même, quoi. Et il lui a dit, oh, mais c'est où l'Algérie euh, Moi, je connais rien de l'Algérie, je sais pas ce que c'est, je connais pas le pays et tout. Ouais, en, et mode, en, fait... en mode, ouais, qui, qui connaît l'Algérie, euh, personne connaît les mecs de là-bas et tout, mais c'était genre débile. Enfin, la manière dont il le dit, c'est que c'était présenté de manière un peu débile. 
Ouais, c'était vraiment pour pour se foutre de lui, puis comme il dit, enfin pour c'était vraiment pour rigoler quoi. Pour et le vanner, comme, ouais. Euh, ouais, voilà, c'est ça. Et puis il disait, mais pas quoi. En plus, il me connaît, il sait que je fais un peu de l'humour comme ça. Euh, et en fait, il a super mal pris. Il a tellement mal pris qu'il a arrêté de parler à tout le monde, que il a dodgé quand il y avait des restos, des meetings, des trucs comme ça. Il, il a complètement genre euh, ignoré tout le monde. Et euh, après une semaine, il a commencé à à se moquer de de lui sur son niveau parce que du coup, euh, euh, Crim Six c'était pas en, il s'était pas il, il s'était pas trop entraîné et tout. Et euh, du coup, euh, bah il pense que c'est pour ça qu'il a voulu un peu qu'il parte parce qu'il pensait qu'il était raciste. Et en fait, c'était juste un gros malentendu parce qu'il il s'est expliqué. Il a dit mais attends, mais je suis pas du tout comme ça. Enfin, c'est pas c'est pas le cas quoi. Et du coup, c'était un peu c'est un peu dommage. C'est un petit peu ce qui a fait la fin en fait, si vous voulez. Et il disait que son année là chez New York Subliners, pour vous dire, il disait qu'elle était tellement difficile, tellement merdique, que ça lui a suffi à être tout à fait OK avec le fait d'arrêter sa carrière. Donc on a quelqu'un là qui a gagné tout sur Call of Duty pendant 10 ans, et en une année là chez Subliners, ce qui était très compliqué, bah il était totalement OK pour... Euh Arrêter, euh, arrêter tout ça. Ouais, euh, c'est ça. Et il a dit, il a dit que c'était un an, mais qu'au final, mentalement, ça lui avait tout pris, quoi. Comme ouais, si ça avait ça. été des années. Lol m'a tout pris. Just Exactement. a little um, question about Black Ops 3. Black Ops 3 was like one of my favorite Call of Duty games. What do you think of it, like looking back? Uh, public matches, it was the best since Black Ops 2. And it has been the best. Uh, competitive, though, the ban and protect single handedly ruined it. Ouais. Yeah, the ban and protect, the, the fact that the ban was just, it's funny how the littlest thing can affect competitive because, you know, when you go into the ban, in order to ban something, you go X, X, right? In order to protect something, you go X, down, X. Okay. So the fact that you could, you know, ban something faster than you could protect something, Right. So at COD Champs in Black Ops 3, what we played was every single team in our pool play yeah. matches, they banned everything that was like normal. So it was like VMP ban, M8 ban, Afterburner ban, Dead Silence ban. Like, uh, big Caliber, I don't know what was the name of uh, High uh, Caliber or like uh, to kill oh, uh, faster in the headshots. Oh yeah, well, I mean, that was usually what you, normal teams would ban that, stuff like that. Right, but they banned the stuff that what the they banned everything that wasn't cheese. Okay, that wasn't like you know the cheap way of playing. It was just the the best way of playing, like the normal way of playing. So competitive, being like sort of the best team on that game, rightfully so. Every team banned the stuff that like we're the best team on the best version of the game. So why not change the version of the game? You know, if we can't be, if we can't beat them straight up, let's beat them, you know. By cheesing. Yeah, by cheesing. Exactly. So it was like, we had like four or five pool play matches and every single, every single match was cheese. <laughs> one, one, of the, one of the matches I remember, we, they banned every single submachine gun. Yeah. So it was like, <sighs> so the public match side of Black Ops 3, I loved. I But loved the it. Competitive. Competitive, like. And I didn't really mind it. I thought it was pretty good until champs. Okay. Until champs. And I was like, what the fuck are we playing? You We're even pl lost to Cloud9 yeah, in well, a yeah. dramatic way a little bit. Well, yeah, but it was like, yeah. And uh, I talked to Pat about it. And I was like, you know, Pat's like, why'd you ban the VMP, all this stuff? And I was like, dude, we played the whole fucking tournament without the VMP. You know, why would we not get it out now? You know, we have experience on this cheese version. You guys don't. So... Yeah, but the champs, it was like, we were so pissed off. But at the same time, I was like, what the fuck was that tournament? That was so fucking lame. Okay. You know, I was running around with the Vesper, you know. <laughs> Playing like, a Vesper on yeah, at the last tournament yeah, of the, the year, biggest the biggest too. one. It was like, just not fun. So. C'est marrant parce qu'il explique que Black Ops 3 il avait kiffé le public mais qu'en compétition c'était chelou à cause des bans, que c'était plus rapide de ban que de protéger des choses et que du coup au tournoi, toutes les petites équipes qui étaient moins bonnes qu'eux, ont fait que de bannir tous les gros trucs, genre la VMP et tous les armes conventionnelles pour jouer en gros d'une manière un peu plus pourrie, tu sais, genre par exemple à 4 AR, des trucs comme ça, il a même une équipe qui a banni toutes les SMG, tu vois, ce qui rend le truc un petit peu chelou parce que du coup t'es obligé de jouer à 4 fusils d'assaut et arriver contre Cloud9, bah ils ont, genre même lui il a dû jouer à la Vesper toute la game pour ceux qui se rappellent la Black Ops 3, il jouer à la Vesper tout 
le tournoi, c'est un peu chelou, tu vois. Et en gros, c'est ce qui les avait un petit peu dérangés vis-à-vis -vis de Black Ops 3. Mais uh, just after, uh, like, uh, Black Ops 3, Infinity, Infinite Warfare was released, the game was not really popular among the community. Was yeah. it uh, your case? See, that, that game is the exact opposite. It was, I thought it was incredible. Really? For, for competitive. Okay. But for pubs, I'd honestly rather get tortured by the CIA. <laughs> I'd rather put on Crest white strips and leave them on overnight. You know, I'd rather, shit, I'd rather do a lot of things. <laughs> so you enjoyed it in competitive, but in public it was awful. 4v4 was incredible. There was actually like a meta. There was, you know, variable. All the guns were pretty fucking balanced. Like, very balanced, actually. XM4, it was, I think, something like this. Uh, MV, no, MV4, yeah, whatever that other MV4, gun was. Yeah. Um, then the ERAD. Snipers are pretty balanced, too. Um, the maps were pretty good. The maps, I'd say, were... Don't get enough credit okay. on, on IW. For you, the um, maps of IW were underrated. The map, yeah, the maps were... They played awful in pubs because it was six versus six, and there was... Super high wall running. You could fucking fly on that game. Um, but the maps, and it was just in pubs, people would just, be, you'd be, sh you know, trying to swat flies, yeah. you know. But in competitive, though, it'd be like, there'd only be one guy flying in the middle of the open, you know. So it, it was completely different. Um, you know, the specialists weren't overpowered. You okay. could still kill a guy with kinetic armor, okay. you know. Uh, you could see in the invisibility, uh, stuff like that. So it was like, I thought the competitive side of that game was incredible, actually. So it's uh, it's, it's a bit funny because uh, I'm just gonna make the quick translation because like IW in France was hated. I think even more than the, the US. Like, les amis, il a dit qu'il avait aimé IW en compétitif notamment pour les maps, les armes qui étaient balancées, etc. Mais il a dit en public, c'est en classé habituellement, il aurait préféré se faire torturer par la CIA que de devoir jouer en public. Et que global, c'était quand même assez bon. Il avait aimé le, le jeu en compétition sur IW. Il trouvait que les spécialistes et tout étaient pas mal. Les armes étaient assez, assez balancées. Despite this, like, you won the majority of the tournament that year. CWL Paris, CWL Dallas. We won, we, we won less. The stage, stage two playoffs. And finally, uh, the Call of Duty Championship, yeah. which allowed Scump and Formal to have their first ring. Yeah, we, we actually won less in that game than any other game with our team. Like AW, we won the most. Mm -hmm. Black Ops 3, we won second most. Yes. IW, we, we won the least. I think we only won like five or seven. Yeah, you still won a little. Yeah, you, left yeah left no, left we left. still won a lot, but it was like off to a. I think it was like a really rocky start. Yeah. So um, that year, though, it was like after we, after I think it was LG won Anaheim. Okay. There's two events left, you know, looked at the schedule. I saw stage two or champs was two weeks after stage two. Okay. And me having experience, I was like, dude, you ain't going to get better in two weeks. You're just not, you know, because um, everyone's going to be grinding sort of like same pace. Like everyone's going to be sleeping as little as humanly possible okay and just playing 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 you're not that's not where you're gonna get better that's where you maintain so i was like after and i was like if we win stage two we will win champs because in two weeks that won't be yeah difference. because uh, yeah exactly everyone's gonna be keep, keep the same pace but right now it's like people are sort of gonna be lazy you know a month and a half till stage two like this is where we grind okay this is where we win champs by by practicing for this event the last weeks before stage yeah. two you will practice hard and then between yeah, the two you exactly. just maintain yeah exactly so that's what we did and then uh, how was it like to get finally that ring like for a player like scum formal how was the atmosphere because they have never won it they've been at the top yeah. for years and it was a relief maybe i would say yeah it was a relief um that venue was probably the coolest champs venue okay um It was at a, you know, Orlando Magic's, like, NBA stadium. Okay, nice. So it, that was, that venue was awesome, you know. 
it wasn't in California, so there wasn't state taxes, so I was pretty happy, <laughs> you know. So, um, yeah, no, it was good. It was good. Uh, I was living in Houston at the time. Uh, my wife had an internship, okay. so we were there for just a little bit. Got our first dog right after, literally straight from the tournament. Let's go. You know. Um, the, the celebratory dog. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I got three dogs now. So, but uh, yeah, no, it was, it was a good, good couple months, I'd say. So, let's go. Alice, est-ce que tu peux nous résumer tout ça, s'il te plaît? Ouais, ouais. Du coup, euh, il disait bah, que euh, de tous les jeux, c'était celui où ils avaient gagné le, le moins. Alors que pour le coup, euh, il s'était dit bah si on tryhard et qu'on réussit à gagner le, le stage 2, euh, c'est sûr qu'on va gagner au final, quoi. On, on va réussir à avoir le championship. Mais il faut qu'on garde le même rythme et tout. Et du coup, euh, ils ont tryhard, ils ont tout fait et euh, ils ont réussi à, à gagner en gardant exactement le, le même mindset et le même euh, entraînement. Exactement. Et euh, il disait que euh, ouais, c'était une délivrance pour euh, Scump et, et Formal, quoi. Et puis euh, en plus, l'endroit était archi cool. C'était à Orlando, il me semble, si je dis pas de bêtises. Euh, et il disait que pour le coup, il n'y avait pas de taxes, pas comme en Californie. Donc, euh, le cash prize n'était pas euh, divisé par euh, 30%. Ah, il était content euh, donc il était super content et il racontait qu'à cette époque il vivait avec sa femme du coup à, à Houston et qu'il avait, euh, avait pu se prendre un chien comme tu l'avais dit, le Celebratory Dog après la victoire Let's go, donc ça ça fait plaisir, ça permet de parler un petit peu de la victoire au Call of Duty Championship uh, After a couple years uh, in optic like that roster breaks up because like on World War 2 you had less good results and stuff um, then you went uh, later on on uh, Dallas Empire um, mm. How was it to finally leave Optic after five years uh, you've spent there, like with the big, uh, like I think, fan base, the atmosphere, and uh, mm -hmm. just leaving uh, your house, I would say? I would say... I don't know. At the time, I was disliked by the Optic fans. Okay. Because it was either you're costing scum or you're yelling at him when he live streams. Um, granted, my approach back then could have been better. Okay. I couldn't have been, you know, I was talking to people. It was sort of hard for me sometimes. And uh, I don't know, leaving Optic, that was where my confidence was at the absolute lowest. Okay. Because I had tens of thousands of people telling me I'm shit, <laughs> you know? Um, so that, that was definitely difficult. You know, that, it, I mean, they were saying things like, you'll never win again. Like, you know, it goes into uh, to your retire. head. Well, it, it wasn't, I was used to it, but I wasn't used to the amount. I mean, it went for months okay. of me just every time I pick up my phone, refresh Twitter, Instagram, didn't matter. Twitch chats didn't matter. Like it was everywhere. And uh did some kind of bullying. I mean that's that's what a pussy would call it. <laughs> um it was just I don't want to claim it was bullying at all. It's it's uh to me it was just they were not misinformed, but I mean the way I take those things, right? Is I used it as motivation. Okay. You know, that's how I took the whole thing. It was like these, like I can either choose to, you know, take what they're saying and, as and, feel, and feel bad about myself. Right. But I'm sitting here, I'm like, I'm 27, 26. I was like, why don't like I use it for the one thing I actually need right now? Cause I've accomplished it all. It was like the one thing, that I don't really, or I need more of is motivation. So I basically just used all those comments and, sh and shit. Like that's honestly what made like that empire team. I think, you know what, like it, it made me put my best foot forward Okay. on that team. Like that was one of the best teammates I've ever been. I was one of the best players I've ever been Who on that team. Yeah. It was like, It was like all any sort of, it was the same sort of feeling that it was on complexity. It's like any sort of problem, any sort of BS, like 
Like just, you know, ignore it, deal with it, get it over with, you know, and keep going. Okay. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. And so all those comments, basically it helped me. Okay. And then right when I started realizing like, yeah, my, okay, my viewership's down. No one cares about my YouTube anymore. Like, you know, fucking fuck apparel. No one even buy that. Like those were just side, side things okay. that I had going. It wasn't so, the main thing. So now it was like, Like back then that was like my head, my head space, like where I was up here, it was so clear. It was like all the distractions are gone. It was like all these people that don't really give a fuck about me. They just care that I'm playing with their, their hero. Right. Every, all of that stuff was just gone. And when, they, when people would talk shit, it got to a point like three months in, With Empire, when I realized, like, yo, this team has serious potential. Okay. Yeah, it was like, I would just sit there and, like, laugh and smile in my own head. Because I'm like, Jesse, wait. Just wait. You know? Wait until things yeah. uh, picks up and... Yeah, just, just give it some time. Because I knew it was like, I was like, oh, these, you know, Shotzi, Hook, Ender, and Clay, you know, I was like, just give it some time. Like, I, I can work with this. You know, and I not only can work with this, but I can make this, this team great, you know? And honestly, I mean, I'm just one fifth of it. You know, they, they put so much effort, time and effort into it too, but it was just all the distractions were gone. I honestly think getting dropped from that team was one of the best things that has ever happened to me, okay. believe it or not, because that, it reminded me of who I am. It wasn't like, like on that team, I was trying to be someone else. I was trying to be nice. I was trying to be, oh, well, not, not, that's, that didn't come out right. I was trying to be like friendly, not swear, okay. like don't get mad in scrims, like, you know, just relax a little bit. I'm like, no, dude. The like, Pierre guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just be like, I don't know. Presentable. I, Well, here's the thing, right? The fact that I don't even fucking know. Well, not presentable. It was more of like a, this is a friendship or a family. Yeah, okay. And to me, it's like, you know, Call of Duty and competing in video games, it's always been do or die. You know, it's always been you succeed or you're, fl or you're making fucking sandwiches at Subway. You know, <laughs> like, like, dude, like, You know, I, I, I play tested video games at Microsoft for a summer and I went home and I didn't even want to play video games. So I knew what could happen if it and, stopped. and I'd worked other jobs too, like, you know, real life jobs. So I knew the consequences of not succeeding in video games the whole fucking time. So it was like kind of a big answer for you to win uh, uh, the champs that year with the team. Even if it was online, oh, yeah. I guess it had a different taste with the online yeah. thing. I mean, everyone's, everyone's complaining about it. It's like, dude, it's fucking COVID. We, we're lucky we're even playing right now, you know? And then people are bitching about the game and all this and that. And I'm like, you know, time to kill and all this. I'm like, dude, this is what fucking Call of Duty should be. This time to kill. This is Call of Duty. You know, and it's like, then I'll argue and all this shit. I'm like, okay, when did you start playing? You know, because the long, longer time to kills, that's all new. You know what I mean? Like that, I think what Black Ops 4 was one of the first Call of Duties with a long time to kill. Yes. Yeah. And it's like, dude, so in some games, that's fucking three times as long as, and you know, All the other Call of Duties, all the shorter time to kills, that's the ones I'm good at. Because I'm like, dude, that's, you know, what I grew up that's on. That's what you prefer. Yeah, then that's what I prefer. That's what I grew up on. That's what I played as a kid. I prefer longer uh, time yeah, to well, kill. I mean, well, then you'll probably like, I mean, it's more like, those are more like games like Halo, Fortnite, you know. I mean, Warzone is a little bit different. But the shorter time to kill... I don't know. P people look at it as like newbie. Mm -hmm. I just think it's different. Okay. It's different because it's like you make one little tiny mistake. You step out just a little bit too you're far. Dead. You're dead. Yeah. 
So it's like you can't make those you can't make those mistakes. Okay. You know. And I don't know. I just love the nostalgia of the first Modern Warfare. Yeah. That one uh you know, using guns, I'm aware of. And this is when I started getting into guns, firearms, too. Okay. <laughs> so, I, so I knew, like, all that stuff. I was like, dude, this is all real. I was like, dude, the, the character outfits and all this stuff, like, I have that gear, you know? So it, was, it felt cool. It, it was... And I, I'm not a fan of the cartoony games. You prefer, so, like, the real games? Yeah, straight games. I, mean, well, I mean, again, that's what I grew up on. Of course. You know, Counter-Strike was the fakest game I played growing up <laughs> you know and right below maybe mario kart so i guess like uh like one of the things that like i think like maybe helped the call of duty community maybe was the release of warzone because warzone like uh, yeah is free and stuff uh you, you, like uh, we know that some people try to put warzone uh, in the competitive uh like uh in the competitive area, I would say. Yeah. Like, uh, what is your opinion about Warzone? Like, do, do you like it? I fucking love it. I, hold on, let me get the coffee. Let's go get the coffee. Bah oui, les amis. Ha la 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 la. Là, on arrive, euh, les amis, sur la fin. On va parler un peu de Warzone, d'MW2. On va parler également un peu d'autres choses. Il allait chercher la petite commande de Eats, son petit café. Là, on est bien, là. Là, on est bien. Dommage qu'il n'y ait pas la traduction simultanée, frérot. C'est impossible, la traduction simultanée. C'est littéralement... Ah, C'est quoi le temps qui prend le café Vas-y, je te laisse résumer, Alice, un peu ce qui a été dit il y a quelques minutes. Ouais, pas de souci, euh, parce qu'il a dit pas mal de choses. Bah, du coup, oui. euh, il racontait que quand il est parti de Optique, bah, il n'était pas hyper aimé par les, les fans Optique. Peut-être parce qu'on le trouvait un peu, genre, euh, un, peu, genre, euh, un peu trop strict et tout. Ouais, il s'était fait défoncer. Fait, euh... Ouais, c'est ça, exactement. Et en fait, en, en, en partant d'Optique, euh, c'est là qu'il a perdu euh, toute confiance en lui. Enfin, vraiment, il était au, au plus bas parce que, en gros, il se prenait des notifications H24, des gens qui disaient euh, « t'es nul, tu vas jamais retrouver d'autres équipes » et tout. Et lui, en fait, au final, il s'en foutait. Tu vois, c'était pas c'était pas le fait que les gens disent ça parce qu'il y a des gens qui critiquent tout le temps. C'était plus le nombre, en fait. Il y en avait tellement, mais énormément et ça a duré pendant des mois. Exact. Que ça l'a vraiment... Euh, ça, en fait, au départ, ça l'a atteint beaucoup. Et après, euh, tu lui as parlé en disant « ouais, bah, c'était un peu du harcèlement » et il a dit « non, non, moi, je veux pas faire ma victime. Pour moi, c'était pas du harcèlement. Et en fait, il a expliqué qu'il l'avait utilisé comme motivation. Il disait « Attends, j'ai 27 ans, j'ai déjà tout fait, euh, je vais m'en servir comme motivation, parce que la motivation, c'est toujours ce dont on a besoin. » C'est ça. Et grâce à ça, euh, pour lui, c'est ça qui a, qui a fait que Dallas Empire, ça, ça a super bien marché, quoi. Et qu'il a réussi à, à être le, le meilleur teammate qu'il qu pouvait être. Et euh, il disait « Même si YouTube, ça marchait pas, bah, je m'en fous, c'est pas grave, moi, je suis focus que sur euh, Dallas Empire. » Et euh, ça l'a un peu genre, euh, donné une vision d'esprit claire sur, euh, sur ce qu'il voulait réellement. Et en fait, euh, il a compris le potentiel qu'avait son équipe euh, très rapidement. Et quand il voyait des, des messages de haine en mode « Vous allez jamais réussir » et tout, lui, il souriait dans son coin, il était en mode « Attendez de voir, euh, on va réussir, on va gagner. » Exactement. Final, bah, ils, ont tout, ils ont tout raflé. Et eh bah ben écoutez, franchement, c'est la folie. Après, derrière, ils ont pris les Call of Duty Championship, etc., online, et ça, ça a bien fonctionné. Et on peut se dire qu'il a utilisé ces messages comme de la motivation. Uh, one question, like, about Warzone, the fact that, like, you really like that game, you want to, like, be invested in it? What, what's your yeah. opinion about Warzone as a whole? Uh, I think Warzone as a whole, it's so good that we're looking at the last couple of years of multiplayer. Okay. Yeah. You think like Warzone is gonna take over the multiplayer? I think here's what's gonna happen. They're either gonna keep making multiplayer and they're gonna slowly start to care less about it, or Warzone will be, you know, Call of Duty. Okay. And we're we're talking like and and maybe that won't happen, but that's what they wanna do. Okay. I, I know, like, I, I bet you they're going to keep making multiplayers, but all their focus, all their efforts, 80% of it plus It's gonna be about Warzone. is Warzone. Yeah, because at the end of the day, that's what brings in the money. Okay. You know, all those character outfits, skins, all that crap. Like, you, there's a reason why Warzone's free. It's because those, those little micro transactions are making so much money. You, know? you, you don't think that they're going to put maybe one day the multiplayer for free? Um, that would be maybe a help, you know? I think when they make multiplayer free, that's when you know they don't care about it. Okay. Yeah. 
because that's when you know Warzone's so fucking big that they don't need to sell multiplayer. They just need to, you know, give another avenue to sell the skins and stuff. So, the kids. C'est dingue parce qu'ils pensent que Warzone va complètement dépasser le multiplayer, qu'ils continueront peut-être à faire du multijoueur, mais qu'ils voilà, ils, ils s'en battront un peu les couilles de ça. Et ils pensent même qu'à terme, Warzone prendra le pas sur le multi, ce qui a déjà été le cas, mais limite qu'ils feront un jour peut-être plus de multijoueur. What is your opinion about Modern Warfare 2 Modern Warfare 2 The well, one coming the up Well, I always say this. The good news is, there's good news and bad news on MW2 multiplayer. The good news is, is that it's still Call of Duty. The bad news is, is that it's still Call of Duty. <laughs> it feels exactly the same that it's always fucking felt. You know, the one thing I will say is the maps, not a fan of the maps. Not a fan of the maps you played at in least, the beta? At least in the beta. Okay. Yeah. I enjoyed them. I think, I, I don't know what happened. To the, there was an F1 map and I don't know what happened to that one. It was supposed to come to the beta. I think it would be in the... Uh, as long as it's in the actual game. I was wondering if F1 tried to sue them for it or something like that. Ah, okay. But if it's not in the game, I'm probably getting sued because maybe I wasn't supposed to talk about that. But the layoff to that map was the best. Yeah, hey, it was crazy. Yeah. We saw Just know, okay, to the one map designer that made that map, you did your you did a good job. Okay. The rest of them though. Mm. That one map developer, yo, look at your colleagues. <laughs> They do better. He's Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ, man. <laughs> Dude. Like. Il a dit MW2, c'est bien parce que c'est toujours Call of Duty, mais à la fois c'est mauvais parce que c'est toujours Call of Duty, donc il n'y a pas vraiment de rafraîchissement. Et il aime bien les maps. Il préférait la map Formule 1 qui devait sortir, mais qui n'est pas sortie, et euh, qui sera peut-être dans le, le jeu complet. Et il n'a pas trop aimé le reste des maps, mais pour le coup, en gros, c'est ce qu'il vient de résumer. Et le fait qu'il n'y ait pas trop de nouveautés, euh, c'est à la fois la bonne et euh, la mauvaise nouvelle. We, we, I have like a, a last question. It's been almost three hours we have been there. <laughs> so, yeah, Don't worry, I'm, I'm unemployed. I'm not fucking doing anything. Let's go, it's fine. I'm not doing anything. <laughs> Thank you for taking the time yeah. and just coming. I think the French viewership like really enjoy and is really happy to hear about you. Uh, it's uh, like maybe a tough question, but let's go. Uh, in Europe and even in France, there were like many debates about uh, Aderal and stuff. Since you used to be a pro player, do, do you think it was like too much or it, was or it wasn't too much or it was a re really a big deal within mm. the scene? Because in, that, France, in that, France, for example, yeah, Gotaga said he stopped banned. because of it's it. It's banned, right? In Europe, it's not allowed. Um, to that, I'd say usually no comment. Um, but, and I don't really know how much I can talk about it, but there's th there is steps in place now. There's steps in place now okay. to make sure that shit doesn't happen. Okay. Yeah, so... Um, it's a good thing. Yeah, no, it's good. Um, I the the weird part is is like it's just so weird. How do you regulate something that half the players can take legally speaking? Mm -hmm. You know that you know they have a condition, right? But then you could have the same person with the same condition in Europe where they can't take it. No. You know? So that's, that's the part where I'm just like sitting there like, what the fuck, dude? What do you even do? Because there's, I mean, you're in, in order for the, you know, say that the CDL determines you have ADHD, right? And you're from France or whatever. You're, you, that's where you live, right? Mm -hmm. You would have to go around the, you'd have to go ask the government Like, hey, can this player break this law to yeah. take their medication? So it's like, what the fuck do you do? You know? So it's, I wouldn't want to be in whose ever shoes has to figure that question out. Okay. Yeah. Because it's really hard to do. Yeah, okay. exactly. That's why it's like, you know, other games where it's European dominated, right? Like Counter-Strike, for example, or, you know, you can heavily regulate it. Because it's like you got you got to deal with one American team, two American teams, but it's like in the in Call of Duty, it's, it's exact, very North American it's exact, centered. Yeah, it's the exact opposite. So it's like I don't know. It, it's a fucking mess. It's a yeah. It's a mess. It's a lose lose. However you look at it, uh, try to figure it out how to make it work. Um, but I would just say that 
shit, I mean, playing Bow Cage Hardpoint, who doesn't have ADHD at this point? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, fuck's sake, dude. I feel like I, I feel like I'm like, I'm like, dude, I think I have PTSD from Bow Cage Hardpoint, dude. Like, like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I'm so all sorts of fucked up from that map, dude. Like, uh, I don't know, but. It's uh, like, uh, as I said, it's a t tough subject, uh, especially in France, because, uh, for example, Gotaga, when he stopped the competition, mm -hmm. he said, like, uh, he mostly stopped because he, he didn't want to take it or didn't want to have to take it to be able to compete. And uh, that's why it, 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 it really brings some really, I don't know the English really, word, maybe yes. fantasme, like really, it's a very, very big people talking about it. Comment je veux dire fantasme, Alice? Obsession. Obsession. It made, it made a really big oh. obsession within, like, the French people. That's weird. Of course, that's weird. But, yeah. But that's why. That's yeah. why. No, it's, I mean, I don't know. I got no comment on that. Because it's, I mean, dude, it's, it's such a tough place mm -hmm. to, I mean, you can't tell someone yes or no on their medication. Of course. You know, you can't fucking do that. Of course. And it's like, I don't know. I, I, I truly believe, especially with this younger generation, that they all have ADHD. Okay. They fucking all do. Because of the yeah. TikTok and stuff. Like yeah, the well, short well, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, none of these newer players, I mean, dude, like, they've never had to watch a commercial on a TV. Mm -hmm. They never, shit, they never, they've never had to watch cable TV. And I think that's actually where a lot of, you know, people our age learn patience. You know, you have to sit through the bullshit. You know, say you want to watch a 30 minute show, you got seven minutes of ads. Yes. Nowadays, you put six minutes of ads on Twitch, all of Twitter fucking erupts complaining about it. Of course. You know, you see last week how everyone's talking about, oh, ad incentives, six minutes an hour of ads is ridiculous. It's like, dude, like. That's what we have to be uh, went through when we were younger. Yeah. I'm, I'm like sitting there like, dude, that's not anything compared to what we used to have to deal with and i don't know but the point is is that it's again a lose-lose situation i mean v very tough to regulate yeah. as you said and the, you said what you had to say uh, how did you react how did people react when you announced that you were retiring like uh, w when you had to put the announcement were you scared like were you like how are they going to react are they going to follow me Maybe i was just sort of bummed um i wasn't really wasn't really in a good spot with it because i'm like thinking like you know out of everything i've achieved at least i've earned the ability to choose when i retire right but i didn't okay you know i wish i could have played another year um the there's just no team to play for you know all the teams didn't want to pay for it it's funny right so much the amount that i achieved actually screwed me okay because all the all my accomplishments all that stuff right like not only in my head but everyone knew like he deserves more than your average joe okay you know and no one had the money to pay and it was it was that or no one wanted to deal with me okay yeah so, so which, they prefer which, maybe a younger player cheaper well swap. younger cheaper you know more high risk than me but at the end of the day when i'm the cost of like fucking six of those players why not get six of those players versus one you know and that's that was the issue so um i mean granted i was sort of i was like i'm not moving you know i'm not i don't want to get paid if i'm getting paid under this amount like don't even we don't even want to talk you know so Because at the end of the day, I knew that the content side of things, like, and the Warzone mm -hmm. side of things was the future. Yes. So even if I got paid, say, you know, I could have taken a contract that paid me less. And who knows, maybe I made, I would have made more doing that than doing content. But at the end of the day, it's, I was taking a step from what I considered, you know, my time was limited to 
the future. Okay. So that's that's basically, you know, I, I decide on the future. Okay. Really nice. Uh, we're going to have Alice who's going to um, like translate this and then we're going to end uh, okay. right here. Bon. Alice, je te laisse y aller. Ouais, euh, je vais juste repasser un petit peu sur l'adéral parce que c'était assez Bien intéressant sûr, fonce, fonce. Euh, quand même. Euh, et du coup, donc pour l'adéral, pour ceux qui ne savent pas, c'est un médic... enfin, un, une sorte de dopant, entre guillemets, qui est censé être utilisé pour l'hyperactivité. C'est ça. Et euh, du coup, en Europe, c'est très, très, très réglementé. Euh, tu as besoin d'avoir des ordonnances et tout, alors qu'aux états unis tu peux en prendre légalement. Euh, ah, les avoir étudiants un peu, euh, et tout, tout le monde y va. Quoi. Ouais. Exactement. Et du coup, euh, il avait l'air un peu, euh, par la question, il ne savait pas trop quoi répondre. Il disait que c'était un peu difficile parce que dans tous les cas, c'était une situation où on perdait dans tous les cas, quoi, et que ne savait pas trop comment, comment en parler. Mais, euh, mais que pour lui, il y avait une sorte, pas, pas d'injustice, mais que c'était compliqué parce que, par exemple, les équipes en Europe qui n'en prenaient pas et se retrouvaient à voir des gens aux états unis euh, à essayer de jouer contre eux alors qu'eux ils en prenaient, il y avait peut-être une sorte de, de différence, il disait franchement le gars qui doit gérer ça, euh, force à lui on n'est pas ensemble euh, mais que, ouais, que pour lui maintenant euh, il ne voyait pas un monde où les enfants n'étaient pas hyper actifs parce que pour, pour, euh, dans notre génération nous on a appris la patience, on avait des pubs, on avait des, des trucs qui prenaient euh, beaucoup de temps on n'avait pas le plaisir bah, directement quoi Ouais, c'est ça. Maintenant, les enfants, ils ont tout à leur portée. Ils, ils sont tout tout de suite, quoi. Donc euh, voilà pour clore le passage sur euh, l'adéral. Et euh, après, donc, tu lui as demandé comment, euh, comment il avait vécu un peu son, son annonce quand il a pris sa retraite euh, par rapport à lui, comment il se sentait. Et il disait qu'il était un peu dégoûté parce que euh, il aurait voulu jouer, enfin pouvoir jouer encore un an et surtout choisir de prendre sa retraite quand il voulait réellement prendre sa retraite. C'est ça. Et là, c'était pas le cas. Parce que euh, et il disait même que en fait au final euh, tout ce qu'il a accompli tout ce qu'il a gagné bah ça un, ça l'a un peu euh, ça l'a un peu bah, descendu parce que du coup les gens voulaient pas le prendre parce que soit il était trop cher soit il préférait des gens plus jeunes euh, prendre un peu plus de risques et tout et euh, même il y avait des équipes qui étaient en mode bah on peut pas te prendre parce que bah enfin on peut pas te payer et puis tu as surtout le prestige qui va avec le nom quoi et nous c'est pas possible pour nous ouais ça s'est retourné contre lui euh, Ouais, c'est ça. Ça s'est retourné contre lui et au final, bah, il, en plus, il voulait pas. Il, il avait une, un certain salaire qu'il voulait, une certaine somme qu'il voulait atteindre. Et en gros, bah, il a trouvé, il a pas trouvé d'équipe pour ça. Donc, il a pas trop eu le choix que d'annoncer sa retraite. Exactement. Et bah, écoute, she translated everything you said. Thank you a lot. Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. It was uh, like a really nice time to have you on here. I really, I'm sure like that most of the audience enjoyed it. Ah, I'm happy. Three hours. <laughs> We make yeah, it no, long. I talk a lot. I talk, I talk a lot. Yeah, but you, uh, I'm really like thankful that uh, you came. I'm really mm -hmm. thankful that uh, the French community had like the chance to hear about you. And I'm really, I'm sure that in the chat they really uh, had a, a blast. And uh, I really hope that your new career now is in the content. Uh, Creation is going to be good. And I really hope we can see you uh, maybe next year at the GP Explorer 2 in mm. France. <laughs> Please. I might be the only American there. Was there any Americans there? No. Zero. Only French people. Unbelievable. But well, you know what? Maybe next I, year. I got to figure out how I can fit in an F4 car first. F4, Le Mans, Le Mans that you already know. And maybe send the message. I know Le Mans. You know Le Mans? I, I'm pretty good at Le Mans. Ok, let's go. I hope you will be able to see you there. Zachor Olib, c'est terminé. Pour aujourd'hui, les amis, j'espère que vous avez vraiment kiffé. C'était vraiment top. Si vous venez d'arriver, comme d'habitude, bah, la rediff euh, viendra très très vite sur YouTube. Je remercie encore Kim Six d'avoir accepté de venir et vous d'avoir suivi. C'était très long, 3 heures, mais c'était très cool. Au moins, on a vraiment fait le tour des choses. Et je vous dis à la prochaine, les amis. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. Bye.